And welcome everybody to this week's episode of our Star Frontiers Alpha Dawn's campaign, Omega Dawn. Uh, Alpha Hawks campaign, sorry, Omega Dawn. Um, we've been off for a little while due to unfortunate circumstances involving some of us, but we're back. Um, everybody's here today except for Thomas, who plays uh, jazz, but that's okay. Um, he's uh, He had to bow out, unfortunately. Um, but everyone else is here, so say hello everyone else. Uh, yeah, I was waiting for someone to say it. Mm -hmm. Very funny. Um, <laughs> as a reminder, the uh, team has been, um, in effect, stranded or semi-stranded on a floating mining platform uh, known as the Jetson platform. Um, uh, something strange is going on. They were sent down or they were asked to come down to the platform. Uh, floating in the atmosphere of a Jovian-style planet named Venturi um, to uh, see what was going on with a, uh, the crew of the platform who uh, called in some sort of emergency. Uh, so far, the, uh, they found that there's some strange stuff going on um, on the platform in terms of the uh, computer systems and various robots and automated defences which have uh, fired on them. Um, strange stuff going on with food dispensers uh, and so on and so forth. Um, the super apes, also known as sapes, which are a uh, working class of uh, primate uh, on the platform, uh, have been uh, generally not too bad um, over the course of uh, the last 24 hours while the, uh, the group's been on, on platform. Um, and where we left off last time, uh, and people can correct me with this, they, uh, the team had found um, the remains of a Yazirian in the SAPE uh, pens, uh, the remains of uh, somebody in a broken freeze field, and the remains of some, and the, a living person in um, one of the freeze fields. That accounts for three of the crew. The fourth one, um, you don't know where the fourth crew member has gotten to, but the only area you haven't explored yet so far is the reactor room. And at the moment, uh, Kat and Voke are in, uh, dressed up in uh, radiation suits, in suits, uh, in the airlock area, go heading into the uh, reactor area. Um, so yes. Right, and the one person who was missing had something to do with like safe training or whatnot, right? No, the one person who's missing had something to do with computer systems. From memory, let me just see if oh, I right. can... Okay, yeah, you're right. Now that you've mentioned it, it jogged my memory. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. No, the safe, the person, the, 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 it was, there was one of the Yazirians was looking after the safes, and that was why, and you, you found a Yazirian um, skull or bone or whatever. Yeah, we found area. the safe handler's bones. Mm. One of them's in a freeze field, another, the team leader's dead, the technician's in a freeze field, the safe handler got eaten by the safes, and the computer operator is nowhere to be found. Mm-hmm. Right, so um, everybody else is outside area E5, the airlock. E4, the airlock, sorry. Um, and Cat uh, and Voke are both in the airlock um, in their suits. What are you guys doing? Well, uh, we're going to go into E5, uh, into the reactor room. E5, yep. Okay. All right. Well, um, when you cycle the, uh, the airlock door between E4 and E5 on the map, um, the temperature uh, immediately immediately rises um, to around about five degrees centigrade. Um, also, uh, your toxi red gauges are registering radiation, mild radiation, uh, not enough to hurt you guys um, as long as you're in your suits and the suits aren't damaged by, for example, Projectile weapons or swords or <laughs> yep. big bad guys, yes. Big bad big guys, yes. 
So, yeah, so it was minus 10 degrees Celsius in, in the airlock. It's now uh, 5 degrees Celsius. Um, and you can see what you can see into E5. Uh, look, it contains um, some machinery, uh, some operating machinery. Um, um, what else I tell you about it? Um, connected by pipes to the machinery. Uh, uh, two cylindrical tanks, each a metre and a half high and half a metre wide, uh, labelled crude CRISD Meta TI. I'll, I'll actually type that out for you in the chat box because um, you'll want to, you'll, you'll, no, you guys, you'll want to know what this is in, in, in detail. Oh. Oh, what? That was supposed to be cat. Oh. Yeah. Does cat yeah. know what that is? Yeah, that's the stuff that the guys have been um, uh, mining and refining. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, that's the stuff, I think. Um, you, all, you would also know, being a chemist, um, that uh, those vessels are insulated and pressurised. Yep. Okay. Uh, and also at a, at a very low temperature, like way below freezing um they also show the, the the they also have dials on them showing that they are full yeah so yeah. um you uh, just to remind you one of the things you were um we're looking, looking at for... doing was returning some of this stuff back to the uh, back to the snowball. Yeah, yeah they, back to the, they want it refined. Well, that is refined. It's it's, re, it's semi it's that's semi refined now. Oh, this is how it comes. This is the end product of the of what's on the platform. Ah, and so this is what those, they want. Yeah, there are yeah. those storage tanks around that we could that that for use for transporting, right? That's well, yeah, one. basically they, the storage tanks are used for transport. They're pretty much like these ones, only yeah. their gauge is red empty. Yeah, okay, so it's more of a switching over tanks than it is. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know whether these were like bigger tanks and. No, they're about the same. They're about, about... the same. They're about the size of a um, um, a large gas cylinder, I suppose. You know, yeah, the modern LPG gas cylinder, a large one. Now you said this room was warmer. Is yeah. That a, is that weird? Given that these tanks are so cool. Well, the, well, the tanks insulated down to, to whatever. Um, look, um, a technician or an engineer or both. I'm both. We've um, got a couple of those. Yeah, I uh, could tell you that um, it's the warmth of the room is probably from the machinery that's operating. Not or the nuclear um, reactor, like the Martian. Well, well, there, there, there's no reactor here, uh, in 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 this room. Um, but uh, there is an elevator, which is labelled E6 on the map. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and this this material that is being mined, is that the thing, is that also radioactive? Or is this radiation uh, from the reactor? No, the radiation's from the, the, the distillation process in the reactor. Okay, yeah. So we're not going to radiate everybody if we pull these tanks out of the room. No, 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 no. Okay, good, 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 good. No. So, yeah, um, what else can I tell you? Um, um, you would know, oh, by the way, uh, again, Kat, because of your chemistry background, you know that um, the, uh, the uh, biochem stuff that's being refined um mm -hmm. it's uh toxic yep. to the four known races yeah so we don't so want these canadas canisters to pierce or anything like that yeah it'd probably be a, be a bad idea yeah it's generally considered to be a bad idea that one yeah is it is it toxic by like contact or is it, is it well under pressure and sprays everywhere and all of the above uh, all of the above. It's not so much contact as it's it's um, not so much contact as in, in, inhaled. 
It's got a boiling temperature of about minus 90 degrees. Oh, okay. So it'll quickly turn to a gas and everyone dies. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. But a gas mask might help. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, if you want to, if you want to smell some, I can give you some more, de more details, but I don't think you want to do that, do you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, I, cool, cool. I kind of asked folks, it's like, are we going down the elevator and radioing in that we're doing so? Yep. And we'll, I assume we've looked around the entire room of E5. Yeah. Well, you haven't given me a search, but you've looked around. It's not quite the same thing. Oh, I'll do a search roll then. Let me find it. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look. Um, apart from what I've, I've, I've give, uh, uh, information I've given you, um, obviously the 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 still, the distillation still, um, and, and all the rest of it. Um, yeah. Um, you reckon um, a tech, anyone with technician skill should be able? To, yeah. It's it's a pretty simple thing to to do. Um, it's, it'll be an operate. So it'll be an operate machinery um, role to disconnect and reconnect um, these canisters up. But apart from that. There's nothing else of much of interest here. There's no readouts. There's no computer terminals. There's nothing like that. Okay. Well, I, how much radiation? If I were to take off my in suit, would it be enough radiation to hurt me? Or um, term yeah, well, exposure is fine. According to your according to your toxi rad gauge. Um, there's enough radiation that in game turns you take it two points per two points of damage per turn. Okay, then yeah, no. Um, so yeah, it's rather it's rather it's not as high as it could be, but it's yeah, pretty high. So yeah, um, I think we go so, to the elevator. Well, the elevator's got three buttons on it. Of course, this it game again. Yeah. No. Uh, well, they're labelled. They're well, yeah, one, two, three. Um, the top one's labelled observation. The second one's uh, labelled um, uh, distillery, and the third one's labelled reactor room. All right. Observation first. Okay. So you get in the elevator, um, and um, it's a couple of moment, a couple of minute, minute or two, mm -hmm. um, and uh, eventually the elevator opens up um, into uh, the observation gallery. Um, which is a large circular room or circular roomish uh, with a lot of glass windows or pers yeah, clear see-through windows with their glass or something else you don't know, uh, giving you a, a, a spectacular view of the atmosphere of vent Ventron. Mm -hmm. um, looking out and down, you can see the tops of the balloon bags uh, which, hold, which are holding up uh, the Jetson platform. So you've obviously come up, obviously, uh, to near uh, top. In fact, let me let me let me give you this because I'm a nice guy. Uh, masking, 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 masking. I want that one. There you go. That help? Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, okay, I still don't like the way I've done it. Um, so, uh, so you're up, you're up, obviously up the top, uh, looking yeah. down on the on the balloon bags. Cool, cool. He says, um, "Yeah, um, it's a rather spectacular view. You can see you can see yourself um, um, in your in, for example, in, in your off hours as such, um, coming up here and and just you know um, chilling out." Maybe with a beer or whatever. Yeah, there's a couple. Of, there's a couple of lounge chair lounges up here as well, facing outwards, and uh, you know, a couple of tables. So it's a real little recreation area, observation area. Not that big. It's only about ten meters across, but still, that's not bad. Well, I'll uh, I'll take I'll do a search oh, for and see if I can. Scene. Sorry, what was that, Hang Babu? On. I was just going to say, if it's a nice scene, I'll, I'll sit down and uh, relax on one of the chairs then. Yeah, but are you are you there? I don't know. Am I there? Or, I didn't uh, we're still down. That Unless was, you want to go through the radiation. Broke, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, oh, dang. 
Because um, if you're there, I need to start applying some radiation damage to you because I don't think this is a, suit, is a radiation suit for you, an in-suit for you, I believe. Uh, I think that's why I stayed behind. No. I think that's why you did too. We only had two, and <laughs> those are the ones we brought with us. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Um, but you're getting a very nice commentary from Cat and Vogue. So I'll do a search yeah, roll to see I'm if um, I notice chair. anything in the room or in the atmosphere above us, below us. No. The radiation um, is practically nil. Um, I mean, it's background radiation, just you would normally expect. So there's no there's no radiation to, 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 to talk of. Um, yeah. Um, but the temperature is co it's cold up here. It's down, it's down to minus 70 or so. Um, okay. And you're about you're about ninety two meters above the main part of the platform. Well, I'm good to go to the reactor room if you are, Cat. Yeah. Uh you can, by the way, um the observation dome not uh, the observation room not only has windows around the outside, it's also got one in the ceiling. Uh through which you can see a twisted mounting bracket attached to the distillation column. Twisted as in damaged? Twisted as in damaged and, sh and broken. Um, if you want to, if you, if both of you want to give, because both of you got the necessary skills, I believe, you want to give me a um, intuition check or a logic check or both, or a, an average of both, whatever. Yeah, it's a, it would have been the prime location, that would have been a prime location for a radio mast. Um, and as you were informed that radio communications were lost, it's during a storm, um, if you remember. Yeah. Um, that was, hang on, where was it? That was in the story box. That was uh, the garbled sp subspace transmission. That one. Um you uh it's possible that's what it is it's, it's where the radio it's possible that's where the radio mast was and it's obviously been torn off in the uh in the winds of the storm yeah. okay. okay do we think the external maintenance spot could fit to that uh if you had the parts you don't know if they've got the parts for it okay um Although, yeah, um, but yes, I'm, I'm assuming you guys have turned up your heat suits by, by now because it's yeah. cold. Yeah. 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 All right. So what do you want to do, guys? Down to the reactor room. Down to the reactor room, eh? All right. So climbing back, it's, again, it's a trip down to the reactor room. Um, where are we? Um, what do I need to give you? I'll give you the whole thing. Bugger it. I couldn't be bothered. Because it doesn't make that much difference. Whoopsie daisy. So the elevator. What's going on there? There we go. Uh, the elevator dumps you out into uh, area E7. Um, uh, the temperatures are uh, back up to uh, plus 10 degrees Celsius, okay? Uh, and the radiations at around about uh, the equivalent of three points of damage per, per round. Okay. Um, each of the, uh, obviously the, the room contains the controls for the uh, six reactors. There are six reactors. Um, around the area, um, which heat the gas in the buoyancy bags and provide the electrical power for the, for the platform. And the, uh, the central reactor, which controls the powers, the distillation process. So there's seven reactors in this room, as you can see on the map. That's a lot of reactors. It is.
So there's a, uh, to the south there near the elevator, there's a, uh, a computer terminal uh, and an access panel, uh, which is labelled. Damn it. Which is labelled. Chemical refinery? Yeah. Chemical nope. refining? Nope. It's labelled that. Yeah, the chemical refining computer. Um, slumped over the terminal is a body or a person. I knew you'd be here. Um, it's a Frask body. Frask. A female rusk body. Uh, and nearby is a um, uh, a robot with uh, standing still, but powered on uh, with uh, BBL dash one slash four stamped into its um, left breast. Yes, it's a humanoid body. Not anthropomorphic, but humanoid. Standard body, in other words. So the reactor maintenance. Yeah, it is. And yeah. that's the computer operator. Sorry. Yeah, it's a, sorry. The robot is spherical body supported by three mechanical legs, three mechanical arms, two with grabs, and one with a multi probe sensor array. Uh, and it's got video sensors on top of its head. So, yes, it's not, it's not a. Um, anthropomorphic at all. It's a sphere, basically. Hmm. So, yes. Uh, I don't think any of us are qualified to check whether the uh, Rusk is fully dead or not. Oh, well. Oh, they're dead. You, you, could, you could certainly... Well, how do, you know she, how do you know she's dead? Does she have an insulation suit on? It was like 10 uh, degrees in here. Yes, she has. Oh, she does. Okay. Kick her and see if she moves. Kick her and see if she moves. Wow, well, I'll call out a cord. Are you alive? Go over and see if there's a skeleton inside. Uh, no, there's a body. Well, there's, a, there's a rust body inside. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, by the way, um, because uh, she was slumped over the keyboard, um, the terminal is still active. Ooh. Um, interesting. Uh, can Cat... Oh, she doesn't want to just push her out of the way. Uh, <laughs> we should set her down on the side. Yeah, let's do that. All right, can I get... Can I get spot checks off both of you if you do that, please? You're going to tell us there's a grenade there? Oh, not me. Cat, there's a grenade. No. Um, th there's a tear in the suit. Ew. It's, about a, it's about one and a half inches. About about six, 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 seven centimetres. There's a tear in the suit. And it's a tear, not a cut. In other words, it's, it's jagged edge, not smooth like a cut would be. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, and that's uh, is that in her her radiation suit? Yeah, her in suit. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. She cactus. She cactus. <laughs> nice way of playing. Um. Uh, so on. So yeah. on the screen is the following, and while you. Uh oh. Didn't need to do that, but ah. well done. No, you didn't, need, you didn't need to do that. Don't worry about it. Um, on the screen is the following, and while you read that, I just need to go visit the little GM's room. So I'll be back in a couple minutes, okay? Yeah. Okay.
Uh, who brought flamers? Mm. Woohoo! So we gotta turn up the heat. Who bought marshmallows? And s'mores. Luckily, this room was warm, right? It was like, well, warm, relatively. Because um, otherwise I'm concerned about that robot right beside us. Well, it's unlikely that that robot... Platform? Sorry? You guys are on the observation platform? E7? Reactor room. We're in the reactor room. That robot is probably fine, considering that it's heat sensitive and this is the hottest room in the plot on the platform. Yeah. Hot in more than one way. Yeah, we can turn it off. I don't know if it's possible to repair an in-suit, or what Accord it takes. Accord is... Oh, sorry, go, keep going. Oh, no, that was all I had. Accord is the Brusk? Uh, computer operator, yep. Yep. So, that's... Three of Alpha Team is dead. Beta Team never arrived, apparently. So that shuttle's... They never made it in that shuttle. So the rescue shuttle they sent never arrived. And the last living member, which is the technician, is still in a freeze field. But will die if we take them out of it. So. Any idea how warm the reactor room needs to be or how warm the environment needs to be to get rid of? To get rid of it? No idea. But and it I said don't, that that I don't think the heat cures it because yeah. the, this observation seems to suggest that it develops. It, it's still it, developed in the reactor room. Yeah. Well, that it was slowest and that it was slowest to develop in the reactor room. Yeah. And that heat simply slows its progress of development. And that it's already infected the other systems, so... So there's a digital thing that's heat sensitive? Yep. So, it seems that the envir the atmosphere created a computer bug, and that computer bug has taken over the station. Well, would it be too far-fetched to think that maybe some organism lives in the methane gas? Maybe. And that... It's small enough or whatever that it lives in the electrical circuits. Maybe it feeds off the electrical energy and causes... Burn. But how would the... Um, um, the sparring bot on the, the money spider... The sparring bot wouldn't come into contact with any of the, con the containers. It might come into contact with crew who's handled the containers, but... Yeah, and it could have transferred across them like a virus. But this seems to right? be a mobile programming bug. Well, if, if, um, it's a, if it's a living entity that's at least somewhat intelligent to self-persevere, it travels across people until it gets to electrical circuits where maybe it eats off the electrical energy or maybe it, it mates or grows or reproduces in electronics. Maybe. Or we don't know yet. 
so far we just know all of it is computer based. Yeah. Yeah. So, how's the speculation going? I think it's those little uh, replicators from Stargate. I haven't seen it, so I wouldn't know. Oh, well, I guess Kat will probably want to look at the computer terminal, and you said there was an access panel? Yeah. yeah. Oh, before that, can I turn off the reactor maintenance bot? Yeah, if you want. Cool. I'll open its panel. You have to give me a roll for that. You, know, you, you, you have robotics, you do, don't you? Or don't you? No, I don't, but I've seen Ceres right. do it. That's why I'm, yeah, you still got to give me a roll, though. What do you want? Do you want debts? Just, yeah, no, I just want, just want D100 roll. Yes, you managed to get the panel off, okay. And yes, you managed to find the switch. And yes, you managed to flip the switch. Cool. Okay. Well, that's all the robots and the facility destroyed or turned off then. Is it? Yeah. Are you sure? No, actually the, the external maintenance bot is still going, I think. Thank you. <laughs> Is that the one that's destroying the F2 or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we can let that go on forever. No. No. Sorry. Right. Cat's starting to do computer stuff. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, Cat? Uh, hang on. Uh... So, realistically, she should be diving into that computer for any additional information that's there. No, hang on a sec. I've got to find the computer list. Where is it? No, that's not it. Where's my computer map? Oh, here it is. Yeah, you're on Terminal 7 at the moment, that's right. And currently connected to the JCR. Now, it's been a while. I can't remember whether I've connected to this computer before. Um, I don't think you have actually I think you connected to one down in B1 or C1 but I don't know I know you've been on the you've been on the JMN you've been on the JGL and you've you've been on the JMT that I know yeah I don't know whether you've been on the JLS or the JCR and this is the JCR that you're currently connected to yeah I think we did connect to the JLS because possibly I, I honestly can't remember. Uh, but the, yeah, they said you can't, the terminals currently connect, currently connected to the J, the um, JCM, JC, um, JCR. I'll get it right in a moment. Oh yeah. We definitely did a JLS cause that's in E3. Yeah. That's cool. computer four. Mm -hmm. um, cool. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I will uh, display info to see what programs are on there. Certainly. Um, there's a level two uh, computer security program, which obviously has been password bypassed because yep. it's so good. Um, there's a level three analysis program. Um, there's a level four uh, atomic drive program, commonly mm -hmm. used in starships. Um, you suspect this one's probably modified somewhat because it's not a starship. Yeah, it's the thing powering the balloon, probably. Yeah, probably. Uh, there's a level four processing program. That's mm -hmm. it. There's a level four processing program, which is obviously controlling the, well, the speculation is it's controlling the um, processing of the um, distillation column. Yep. Um, yeah. 
Cool. I would like to just just uh, jump into the uh, the processing one and the, the the drive program just to make sure that everything's okay and nothing. Sure. If you give me if you give me a um, you give me a, a um. Ah, oh, what's that? Is it? Sorry, it's been so long. I've forgotten. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do not like that either. Sorry, something else I just don't like. Um, where are we? Uh, technical skill. Um, 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 well, I be yeah, I guess so. It would be like looking at the at the run running of the program to make yeah, sure there's nothing funky. Closer looking to, at logs and yeah, stuff like that's that. Yeah, that's closer. To, that's closer to a manipulate programs than it is um, a display info. Yeah, display info is using the program to display info. Yeah, you know, yeah. Whereas you're doing a bit more detail, so uh, yeah, yeah. We'll use the yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the, so level four, well, they're both level four, so it's 40% off. So you made that one. Was that, for, that was for the what? The, so we'll do that the drive the, the or the processing? Process. I said processing first, so we'll do it That's in okay. that order. Okay. Um, yeah, look, it appears from everything you can see of it, um, it, it, all the logs are showing up as, as everything's normal. Um, it's, it, there is a, there is a lot, there's been a log warning for uh, quite a few days um, that um, the distillation process has stopped. Um, because the um, storage containers yeah. are full mm -hmm. and need replacing, but that's not—I mean, yeah, that's not unusual. Yeah. Um, assuming your logs are correct, which yeah. you have to, don't you? <laughs> I just—I'd be worried about further corruptions of these programs, given what we've been yeah. seeing. Yeah. Well, now everything seems okay. Um, and that's the drive program, I take it. Yeah, yeah, it, that it is. It's it's um, normally a, normally an atomic normally a drive program would control the atomic drives and atomic power for and the, for and the um, for uh, for uh, space and starships. Um, these this this particular program it's been modified um, to, as you correctly correctly assumed, um, keep the uh, keep the the um, bags. The, the platform um, at the same at the correct the altitude. Yeah. Um, so um, it controls obviously the reactors uh, for the buoyancy chambers, um, and also controls the vents in the buoyancy chambers. Um, so, I mean, let, let, let's take a let's take a worst case hypothetical. Um, if the vents were to open, if the, if the program was to fail and the vents were to open, you'd sink into the into the um, Further into the atmosphere, um, and if the uh, if the uh, reactor gets too hot, mm -hmm. the gas gets too hot, you'd float up higher. Uh, and, if, and if the reactor shuts down, you sink into the atmosphere as well. So you know, it's it's a it, it's, there's several ways that it could go wrong. Put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. And and on a similar type note, the the processing program. Which also controls the uh, uh, oh no it doesn't the drive the drive program controls that reactor as well um, so uh, so yeah and apart from the uh, security one uh, there was the analysis program yeah the analysis program um, where are we uh, I assume uh, that's the terminal output that we saw but. Uh, no, it's not actually. Well, it, oh. it, it's part of that. There is, but um, the analysis program, um, in addition to that, that that looked like something something that um, she was running before she died. Yeah. Um, and if that's the case, then that would make a sort of kind of sense, you know, trying to work out what's going on. And normally, the analysis program analysis assimilates data from the various uh, platform sensors, mm -hmm. uh, orientation, external conditions, yeah. Uh, and obviously then calculates any adjustments necessary to maintain the stability of the platform and the biochemical extraction process. Um, that's what that's what its main job is. So it, it links into the, um, as you'd expect, it links into the um, the, the processing uh, and the drive programs, and also uh, gets linked in. There's also links into the um, the the JM the JMNVE bureaucracy program back on the JMN computer. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so, yeah. Um, the interesting thing, by the way, the interesting thing, um, the terminal that you're on at the moment uh, connects directly into the analysis um, program. It bypasses the computer security completely. Oh. So in other words, it's it's a it's a it's a um, in modern terms, it's it's a directly connected console terminal terminal seven. Yeah. Um. So um. So yeah. And if I I didn't find any trace of the little tunnely weird thing that we found at the console in five. Mm, you have to remind me. You have to remind me. Five was the communications. Uh, it was the thing that was showing the cartoons, and it had this weird terminal. No, was it number six cartoons? Uh, maybe. Yeah, actually, it was number six. Well, terminals five and terminal six both can connect to the the JGL. That's the communications program on the on the JGL. Yeah. Um, now that one, just let me find that, find that in my list. But I think it was either six or five. There was a weird, um, connection on that machine and we were trying to find the other end of it. And I don't think we found it. Oh, yet. um, oh yes, that's right. Terminal six, terminal six was connecting. Uh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, now you did you did find out where that went to, or you should have done by now. Okay. Terminal because remember terminal six connects. I think you, I think what you're talking about is when terminal six connects to terminal four directly. Uh, yeah, okay, yep. And obviously terminal four connects to terminal six directly. Um, yep. so that if you do a if you do a secure shell from one terminal to another, you can then use the remote terminal connect to connect to whatever it can connect to. Oh, okay, yep. So, when Terminal Four connect, Terminal Four can connect to the life support JLS. Yeah. So you can secure shell into Terminal Four from here on Terminal Six. Oh, sorry. You can you can secure shell from Terminal Six into Terminal Four and then into the life support, or from Terminal Four into Terminal Six to get into the general computer. Gotcha. Yeah. Whereas most of the other terminals you found so far connect to one or two other. Yeah. Um, computers directly. None. Of, this is the only time you get a tunneling effect. Yeah. So is that, is that is that how you remember? Is that what you're asking me about? Yes. And I think there was a there was a mess with two and four because we I th think when we went into that room there was confusion of exactly which computer was in there. Was which? And, yeah, that was yeah, my fault. Yeah. Sorry and, about that. Yeah. So I think that's where we might have lost that info. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. 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 Okay. That makes sense. So yeah. So so. Assuming you've been making a scratch map, and I know I promised I'd make one up for you, but I haven't had time because of everything yeah. else that's been going on. Terminal one, right, mm. can connect to JMN. Yep. And JGL. Mm -hmm. Terminal two. can connect to JCR mm -hmm. and JGL. Yep. Terminal 3 can connect to JMT mm -hmm. and JGL. Yep. Terminal 4 can connect to JLS Mm -hmm. And terminal six. Uh, yep. Terminal five can only connect to JGL. Mm -hmm. Terminal six can connect to JGL and terminal four for obvious reasons. And seven is obviously the reactor maintenance. 
uh, terminal seven connect to can connect to JCR. Oh, you don't know you don't know if it connect to anything else at the moment because you've only ever tried to connect it. To, it's already it's pre connected to, to the JCR. Yeah. So whether it connects to something else as well, you have not yet you have yet to discover. Okay. And was that an interface to figure that out? Uh, no, it's simply it's simply logging off logging off the JCR, going back to the uh, terminal, in effect the terminal logging screen, and seeing what options are available. Ah, uh, yeah, true. Yeah, okay. May as well do that to complete the map. Uh, would Cat be able to um, backtrack and see what command what inputs the uh, Rust computer operator put in? Uh, you, well, it depends on how detailed the logs are, but I mean, it's certainly that's the place to look. Would be the would be the logs. Um, some some systems, okay, in real in the real world, like in our world, some systems log every command. Often you don't do that unless you're trying to actually debug something because it fills the logs up and the logs fill up the hard drives and the hard drives stop working. Um, so log log maintenance is a, is one of the things you need to really look at, look after when you're doing. Um, uh, doing all of this stuff. If, on the other hand, she had the logging level turned up to the debug level, where everything gets logged, um, and it may, she may have actually done that because she's trying to work out what's going on, and so the more information you've got, the better. Um, then it's more likely to be in the more likely to be in the logs. But general general running logs, you record really critical stuff um, and um, critical what what's commonly called critical warnings. But you don't you don't do a lot of the lower level stuff like everyday commands. Um, so, so stick along those lines is where I'm going. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so so did you say you wanted to log out of um, the J JCR or not? Uh, or yes. do you want to do it in a minute? Sorry. Do you want to do that now? Or do you that? Do you want to do that in a moment? Uh, as long as I've got any. As long as I feel like I've got. I've looked at all the places and got all the information that I possibly could out of the programs that I have access to now. All right. Well, so the on the JCR, mm -hmm. right, um, the computer security program uh, links into the analysis program. Yep. The analysis program links into the drive and the processing program. Mm -hmm. All right. And there's a one-way link from the bureaucracy program to the analysis and drive programs, the yeah. bureaucracy program on the JMN. So the JMN can send commands to the JCR, but not the back, you can't go backwards. Yeah. It's a one-way gate. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that one. Um, so that's on that computer. How the, how the other programs or, or how the other Software all plugs together on the individual computers. I don't think you've done that analysis yet. Uh, you don't, you've done it for some of them, but not all of them. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, yeah. And obviously, you you can't get from one terminal to another terminal, except in the special case of terminals four and six. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, and did you had that? You you got those computer and program levels? Did you want that, or have you got that? Ah, uh, yeah, I got that. So it was. Yeah. Let me... Yeah. Good. Just as long as you know, because it's all information that may or may not be relevant. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Um, so that's how it all. That's how it all hangs. That's how all that software interacts with each other, via sockets or whatever, um, on the on the JCR and obviously back to the uh, the JMNBE mm -hmm. uh, software. So yes. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll ask the question again because we've moved on, and I'll come back to it. Um, I, I, now that you had that information, are you logging out of the yeah. JCR and seeing? Okay. So when you log out of the J, when you terminate the JCR connection, um, you're given two options on Terminal Seven. One is the JGL, and the other is the JCR. Yeah, as expected. As expected. But as you said, you wanted to complete the map. Yeah. Cool. Uh, it sounds like I really should do some more in-depth analysis into the bureaucracy program, which I haven't done yet, um, but that's a later problem. 
Yeah, well, you, you, you're here for another hundred. You're here for another seventy odd days. Don't forget before yeah. the. Uh, so you got plenty of time to do that if you wanted to do that, uh, while yeah. other people are doing things like I don't know, um, filling up canisters, repairing things, trying to work out, you know, what's going on. Yeah. If you haven't worked out already. Speaking of which, there was some speculation when I came back um, that about living creatures or something. <laughs> Well, that's the guy who thinks worms exist everywhere. And they're always behind oh, yeah, everything. Not a guy, what, so, but thank you what, very so, much. So, what, so they're, they're miniature sapphire, are they? That's what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. So I think in the meantime, since we should turn off... Wait, hold on. We found the maintenance computer, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, you should have you should have you should know physically where each of the five computers are and yeah, each yeah, of the seven terminals are. Um so I think we should turn off the external maintenance bot if we can maybe turn it off through the maintenance computer. If the well, computer the lets us that would be a good thing to do otherwise we can turn it off manually and then i think we need to have cat try to figure out how to defeat matrix and everybody else needs to get working on repairs well yeah don't we need to get that one robot who's tearing apart our station yes so that's what he's talking about yeah well, there's cat. Cat remembers that there's a, a robot maintenance pro, uh, program on the JMT maintenance, maintenance computer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Voke, while Cat's doing all the computer stuff, he will inspect the reactors for any faults. No, there'll be seven individual um, roles, please. Wait, is that was that five? It's four. And they're not search roles. No, nope, not search roles. Nuclear. No, you're a bit, bit, a bit quick, mate. Yeah, nuclear roles. We're talking nuclear reactors. So. Uh oh. Seven. Yeah, you're not what? sure about. Hang on. Well, oh, well I only uh -oh. failed one, and the one I failed was the one I rolled a hundred on. Yeah. Um, reactor five, which is the um, so there's there's the distillation reactor, and then six uh, six uh, uh, for want of a better term buoyancy reactors. Reactor five um, appears to be in some sort of fluctuation. Unstable fluctuation. Is there a readout panel that i can address um well there's some, there's some, some indicator there's some indicators um some obscure indicator panels it's not simple to read which is why you uh, had to roll for them but um the control of the the control of the reactors is done via the drive program on the on the on the jcr computer i'll ask cat to take a look at reactor five and look at its energy fluctuations see if you can figure out what's going on well i think cat would tell you that you're crazy because she <laughs> just looked at the whole program and it's running and it looks fine <laughs> well <laughs> my my, my question my question my question my question as a as an it person is shouldn't you look at the logs anyway just to make sure i i was under the impression with my manipulate programming role that's what i did I uh, no, you were looking at looking at the logs and looking at the coding, but yeah, but I mean, as I said, um, if that's the case, yes, you're right. If that's the case, then yeah, the logs the logs look fine. There's, that doesn't mean anything wrong as far as the logs are concerned. Well, I get the impression that my search before I would have found such alarms or any yeah anomalies or unusual behaviour. I would have found it. Mm. But don't forget, you don't know what your search role was technically. No, and that's me trying not to metagame. 
<laughs> I looked at it, it was fine. <laughs> okay, well. That reminds me, Ben, now you weren't playing with us at that stage, were you, Ben? The guys had to get across, uh, real quick sidebar, um, a D&D &D, D &D type game, the guys had to um, um, get across a chasm in the mountains to get into a cave they wanted to explore. So they, they came up with the idea of hooking a rope over a, an overhanging branch and then swinging, swinging across on the rope, Tarzan style. So they had to make a, a, a knot tying roll. So they made a knot tying roll and we rolled it. Uh, we rolled it uh, and it came up as a critical failure on the knot tying roll. And nobody wanted to be first. <laughs> Which was which was metagaming to the extreme, obviously. Well, the, the the person who would have normally gone first wore a lot of armor, if I'm understanding this game correctly. Uh, yes, yes, it, yes, it was the paladin. Yes, it was the paladin, and it was the halfling. It was the halfling that tied the knot. Yeah, or didn't tie the knot, as the case may be. And so yes. Well, I found that rather rather humorous. I actually had to penalise them more some exp some experience points for that because uh, they were metagaming too blatantly. Yeah. Anywho, uh, so yes, but the uh, the paladin actually did end up going first. Yes, the knot did come come out, and so he was left hanging on the opposite cliff by by his fingertips in full armour. Nice. And he did and failed the strength roll to pull himself up. So he he, he didn't fall, but he's hanging from one hand. It's like for God's sake, come and help me. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of fun. Anyway, back to this game. Um, so, yeah, so um, what do you guys want to do? Because don't forget, what's happening is at the moment um, is that Voke and Cat are both in the reactor room, some almost 100 metres or 50 metres below the rest of the guys up in the regular, plat uh, regular, um, the regular platform. Um, so, so a the idea of bringing the technician out from the freeze field. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, do you want to do that, though, really? It's my question. I'm a bloody doctor, damn it. Yeah, but do you need to, I mean, put it this way. As long as the power remains, he's, they're perfectly safe in the freeze field. Yeah, but he might have some intel or something that happened. Well, I think all the intel, I think that all the intel has been, uh, you've already got all the intel that he has before he went into the freeze field. Do we? I think you do. I mean, they were at a loss completely as, as to what was going on. And if you look at the, if you look at the garbled, garbled subspace transmission file in the story temp, in the story areas, you know, um, yeah, um, but that's about all the information ahead. I mean, well, I mean, if he's been put in the freeze field and he's injured, maybe he requires surgery, right? No, he's not injured. You know that already. And he's in this. He's in this. They put they put themselves in freeze fields to survive the x number of days it was going to take for to get to get rescued. Just give me a second. I think we should defrost the guy. How about you guys? Sorry, I just have to take my shirt off. I'll start to overheat. Um, they went into the, they went into the freeze fields to survive the X number of days because remember the temperature was dropping um, precariously in the platform. And they were afraid of freezing to death, so they froze themselves <laughs> in the freeze field, which is rather ironic when you think about it. Well, I think we should defrost him, but I'm, I'm interested in what everyone else on the team thinks. Oh, if Doc thinks he can do it safely. I thought we looked at them and we thought that if we took them out of the freeze field without uh, fixing them first, they would die. Well, as I said, at the moment, as far as anyone is aware, they went into the free, freeze field to survive until until they could be rescued, and they're not going to be you're not going to be rescued for another seventy days yourself, or until you get the shuttle fixed and uh, sorry uh, get the corridor fixed and and the shuttle refueled 
and then wait for this uh, for snowball to come back into close orbit, which is about seventy days from memory. Mm-hmm. Thirty-eight. Or thirty-eight days in whatever. Thirty-eight it days. Yeah, it's certainly it's certainly it's certainly a long time uh, from now. And it's one less, and leaving them in the freeze field, it's one less, uh, one less person to worry about having to feed, or keep alive from the from the cold, or things like that. So, well, I mean, if we follow that logic, then we everyone should be frozen, or yeah, but if but, but you are the rescue team, remember? Well, that's why I'm thinking about defrosting to find out if he has any other information. But hold. I think we uh, analyzed and we thought he would die if we did that, or she. I think it's a she. I think it's, I can't remember. Um, I'll look it up later. He. It's a he. 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 Yeah. He. And, apart, and, and just just uh, just as, as a as a, a sidebar, um, deactivating taking people out of freeze fields normally requires a hospital. Um, it's not something you generally do in the field. That's something you do know, Doc. Um, otherwise, there are there's usually there's usually complications um, when you do it in the field. That's why it's normally done in the hospital. There's no clinic on this facility. Nope. Not have you found one? Nope. There's your answer. All right. Well, I, I I still think, but um, yeah, that's all right. I'm just giving you the option, man. I'm a doctor. That's what I'm supposed to do. Mm. There's a patient, right? So, well, I suppose you call it a patient. Yeah, no. Well, we've got two, three dead bodies, and one that's not. So that that's something mm. that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So apart from that. What do you think? What do you guys think about doing? Because I mean, again, you still cat and broke. You're still down in the, in the react in the react in the reactor room. Everybody else is still upstairs. So, um, what do you guys want to do from that point of view? Well, I think we need to first deactivate the external maintenance robot. So I think if cat's done on the terminal down here. Yeah. Then we should go back, go to Terminal 3, go to the maintenance program, and try to deactivate it or to have it come inside and whatever. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and if not... It might, be, it might be worthwhile sitting down and, and um, in effect, a council of war and work out what you actually got to do all up. I mean, you know you've got to... For example... You want to you want to deactivate the maintenance robot? Yep, no problem. Well, as far as you're aware, no problem. Um, you've got to get the shuttle refuels. Um, you need to do something about the heat um, because you can't go thirty odd days in the heat seats you've got. Uh, well, you probably could, but it'd be incredibly uncomfortable. Um, if you've got time, you you may want to think about. Uh, doing some more refining because that's you know there was going to be a bonus paid to you for every every canister returned remember um, and that's that's uh, that's tapping into the general greed of this party. <laughs> I, I have a question about the safe. So do they have access to the entire facility, or are they sort of locked in that sea area? Um, well, at the moment they're locked in that sea area. Um, they certainly did not have full reign of the platform since the accident because they were in the they were, you know they were in that um in that um in that area apart from that one who got in effect in inverted commas trapped in area b the one that hangs on the jazz all the time or did um whether they had access to the platform before the storm the magnetic storm whatever um it's possible. In fact, it's even probable. But if that, if so, it would be only under the supervision of the safe handler. Yeah, I'm, sure. just, I'm concerned about hungry safes seeking uh, gnawing of our bones. So, is there any yeah. area C guys? Well, 
Area C. I mean, you could you could lock you could lock off Area C if you wanted to. The trouble is, you're probably going to have to go through it to get to get from one side of the platform to the other because you can't use Area F. Remember? Well, Area F is a bigger risk. Put it that way. But I mean, as I was about to go on and say, if you you've also got to get some sort something sorted out with the, with the uh, food dispensing area, food dispensers. Yeah, so I did the uh, list of chores and notes. That's everything I can think of off the top of my head. But that would stop the safe from eating you guys if you get their food dispenser working as along with everybody else's, remember? That's just so, yeah. stuff we need to fit. Yeah. Heating and systems, the, question, the northern docking bridge, the northern docking pad fuel line, the safe food machine, and the crew food machine. Mm-hmm. And now the question then becomes, what do you do about this so-called matrix thing, whatever it is? Well. But there are things you have to do, you know, or, or things you should look, think about doing possibly. How, how, Sorry, go how, how, uh, how cold was... Uh, what is it? The F two. Yeah, F two or whatever, whatever, whatever the room that number one terminal is in. Oh, what? I can't remember. When I can't remember where number one terminal is. Oh, I think it's E two. Yeah, there. No, oh, I'm not looking. Hang on, I've got the map zoomed in. I think it's zoomed negative way. ten for almost every room except like F two. Hang on a sec. Negative ten Celsius, I think, is the standard temperature at the moment. Yeah, most of the platforms at minus ten. Yeah. Um, except for um, uh, the the F module. Um, oh, and the observation, you know, and various other bits and pieces. Um, the F module um, is below, depending on which which part of it, somewhere between uh, minus one twenty and minus eighty degrees Celsius. Yeah, even though we closed the one door. Yeah. Okay. Because it's not an insulated door; it's it's a door. Ah. Um, the observation gallery was at minus seventy. Um, the react the reactor rooms at plus ten, the the biochem distillation rooms at plus five. Yeah. Um. And the airlock, the airlock, the E4 airlocks between minus 10 and plus 5, depending on which side it's open to, obviously. Yep. Um, but yeah, minus 10 seems to be the general area, the general um, average temperature throughout. Um, the access panel to the docking, docking station is a lot colder, obviously. Yeah. Because the main concern that CAT has right now is that the the bureaucracy program on the main computer uh, is sending input to the things that could kill us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. and, and it's in a minus 10 degree room. So we'd be, it, it's all well and good to think that all the maintenance, the, the drive and reactor maintenance programs are in the hottest room of the ship. But I'm just concerned about that avenue of communication from a potentially matrix infected program um because we've seen we've seen the we've seen programs on the life support systems and the communication systems already fail uh in negative 10 degrees so the we should probably be suspicious of the bureaucracy program is mm -hmm. where cat's brain is at um so what are you thinking? Do you manipulate the bureaucracy program to bring the temperature up? Uh, I think I just want to have a look at it to see if I make sure that I can't find any evidence of corruption yet. Okay, sure. Um, but that, you'll, that, have to, yeah. you'll have to do that from one of the pro one of the appropriate terminals, obviously. And yeah. So I'm assuming you guys are going back up the lift. Yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then obviously, cats on trying to fix the food machines and the and the uh, temperature, if they're a software problem. Yeah, well, both of those, both if they are a software problem, well, either, either or it doesn't matter, both of those would be controlled by the life support program. Yeah. Because it's life support. 
Yeah. So I think I'd, I yeah I would be looking at the the main computer first and trying to manipulate the bureaucracy program, and then I would be trying to manipulate the uh, the uh, the temperature and the food programs. Sure. Okay. So that's what you're doing. So you're you're heading for you're heading for terminals one or one and four. One one or four. Yeah. Four? Why? F oh, one four. One four. Yeah. Yeah. While you're at one, if you could check out the external maintenance bot and see if you can manage it somehow. Well, that's done from terminal I, three normally. Oh, it yeah, is. Okay. Yeah. Although there is a link, there oh, yeah, is a link, the, the, there is a link, a link from the bureaucracy, bureaucracy program to the robot maintenance program, which is standard. I mean, that's what a bureaucracy program does. It coordinates everything. Yeah. It's uh, the big brain. Well, if we could get you to do the do that robot first and if you can't do that if you can't turn it off and not have it fall into the atmosphere but you know come yeah, back that's... inside and shut down then yeah, we'll that's... go out and do it manually that's fair i'll go to terminal three then all right where's everybody else going uh i Dad? will I, i'll bring the body out i'll bring the brusque body out Okay. Uh, except it's going to be radiated, isn't it? Uh, well, I can bring it into the. I can bring. I can. Yeah, I'll bring it up to E5, and then Cat can give Doc her insulated suit, and Doc can come look at the body. That sounds like a plan. Is that what you want to do, Cat and Doc? That sounds fine to me. Hey. Autopsy. Autopsy. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, so you bring the body up into E5, um, closing the door to, uh, uh, sorry, E5, yeah. So um, there's not really room here to do an autopsy unless you want to do it on the floor, which is possible. Unless you want to go back down into E7, which would Well, have... there's not much room in E7. There's not much room in E7. Yeah, I know there's not much room anywhere, but... Well, I mean, as long as it's not going to interfere with anyone, I'm not above doing something on the floor. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, you you spend the next hour or so doing the autopsy, Doc. Um, I'll get you to give me a a, a, medi a general medicine role, um, a surgery role, a major surgery role, um, to uh, to simulate that. Cat, you're going to go work on the computer. <laughs> what, what what's everybody else doing? I will take the insulated suit from the Vrusk and because I assume the doc is going to take it off for the autopsy. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to see if the station has supplies to fix the tear. Uh, there would be supplies somewhere on the station. Um, so yeah, you can search through and find it. Um, and then give me a uh, repair. In effect, it's repair machinery, effectively. Okay. What about you, Jazz, Cerise, and Babu? And I will How have... How long were they go gone up there? Uh, up and down. They were gone about an hour all up. But they were in constant communication with you guys. Right. I mean, I probably would have seen if Jazz wanted to help me shut down that robot in F2. All right. You're going to wait for Cat to try and do it electronically, or are you going to go out there and do it manually before they get back? Well, I guess would ask Kat if she thinks she could do it remotely through the computer system when she gets back. Yeah, I, do, I, I, I before, like when we initially uh, uh, looked at the maintenance computer, I, I don't think we looked at it hard enough to make that decision, uh, but it's definitely something that she was going to go and try now. Okay. Yeah, then I'll, I'll leave it for that. Then I'll give okay. you the suit to repair. Unless we think that there's some imminent danger to that No, I don't, I don't think so. Um, as I said, there's some, somebody wrote a note about things about chores. Did you um, share that, Evoke? Yeah, it's public. Those are just main system things. Um, I mean, we're, we're going to do the robot right now, so I'm not going to put that on there. Yeah, okay. All right, so if you're heading for Terminal 3, is that right, Kat? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, um, you need to log in. Now, you've already 
operated this computer before, haven't you? You've bypassed, you've got past the security, haven't you? Yeah, we've got all the passwords, I think. Oh, okay. Because we got it in the uh, shuttle info dump. Right, hang on. So let me check, let me check, let me check something. Like, is the password 23 colon 11 colon 07? Give me a second. I'm looking for it. <laughs> I'll also um, give magnets, 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 the magnets, in magnets, to vo uh, not vo Cerise to repair since they're a better technician. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, um, yeah. That's no problem. You can get in, you can get into that computer. Okay. Cool. And that in suit. You've now got an in suit, Cerise. Yep, that's the wall. Hmm. And then I guess for that hour while they were up there, then I would have been working on the heating units in the E pod, see if I could raise the temperature in E. All right. Um, give me, give me a um. Yeah, hang on. What's the best skill for that one? Uh, da, 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 technical, 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 Operate technical. Machinery. Well, probably some sort of diagnosis, and then probably operate. Um, give me a good, yeah, yeah, operates, operates probably the best one or repair. I mean, there's not much difference. Um, look, um, the heating unit, it, it seems to be, everything seems to be working A-OK -okay, um, in terms of um, they're doing exactly what they're being told to do by the controlling computers. Right, so there's so nothing, can, there's, they're not broken as such. So if I can override the computer thermostat per se, and just fix it to be on, at least for now. Uh, yeah, no, you, 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 that's something you don't think you can do. Okay. It's, it's too, it's too, it's too automated. It's too controlled by the, by the computers. Okay. Um, I mean, you can, you can, man, you can try to manually adjust it, um, but when you do that, um, the, com the computer simply re resets it back down to, back down to um, what it was. So, so now, do I can I find where the thermostats are? No, that's the thing. The thermostats are somewhere just part of the general sensors of the of the of the system. So they're all over the place. But uh, yeah, they're at the airlocks, right? Put cold yeah. sources by the thermostats. Right, so not necessarily mess with the thermostat itself directly, but no, I I I get where you I get where you're you're, you're going. I'm, I understand what you're trying to do. Uh, what type of cold source were you thinking of? I don't know at this point. I mean, if maybe some of the the methane gas, something like that. I don't know what's colder than what we're already dealing with. Well, minus ten. Yeah, it's um, interesting. Um... Um, I don't know. The, there's always the poison gas that you've been refining, but I don't think you want to do that. No. Um, well, you, you might no. want to. I don't know. <laughs> um, you could try using some ice, but ice generally is at minus at zero degrees or just under, and this is at minus ten, so that wouldn't actually do anything yep. uh, in that regard. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, I think we'll have to leave it to cat with computers. Yeah, possibly. Um, so, Cat, you're on the. I'll, I'll give you that result later in a, in a minute, Doc, if that's all right. Cat, um, you're on the maintenance computer. You're logged into the maintenance computer. What are you doing? Yeah, uh, I'd be trying to debug the robot control program, uh, specifically with regards to the external maintenance robot and whether right. I could shut it down. All right, well. Do you have an accurate map of of the maintenance computer software and how it all how it all hooks together? Uh, I don't think that I do. I think we just listed the programs. I don't mm -hmm. think we. I don't think we got a map of it. Do you want to um? Do you want to try and get get that information? Yeah. Let me just get a fresh page to draw on. <laughs> You're making notes for yourself, are you? Yes. In the uh, system or out or. or... <laughs> I'm drawing diagrams, so I don't think the system's going to work very well. Okay. Um, uh, you can draw them. You can draw a pic. You can draw a picture for yourself. I think. Anyway, sorry. Right. How yeah. do you want to do it, mate? It's up to you. 
All right, so you've got four pieces, four pieces of software on the, on the maintenance computer. Yeah. Which is the computer security, the damage control, the maintenance, and the robot maintenance, robot management. Damage control. Damage control three, maintenance one, robot maintenance four, computer security two. Two. And the JMT, the JMT is a second level computer. And maintenance. Oh, there's my terminal location. I couldn't say it. Cool. So the computer security links into the other three. Yep. Um, the damage control links into the maintenance. Mm -hmm. The maintenance li links into the robot management. And there's a one-way link from the bureaucracy to the damage control, maintenance, and robot management software. Yeah. Making me all very suspicious about this bureaucracy program. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not, a, it's not a new, I mean, that, as, as I said, that's what a bureaucracy program does. It's it's the central control software. Yeah, but if there's, if there's one thing to malfunction and fuck up the entire station. <laughs> then, yeah, the bureaucracy program would certainly be certainly be a prime candidate, yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah certainly would. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so that, that, that's, that's, the, that's the inverted commas map of the JMT. Yeah. Now, I guess what I'm trying to figure out with my role and inspection here is whether this uh, external maintenance bot is wrecking the place uh, out of a malfunction in this program. Or in the bot itself. Or, or in the bot itself, or in commands that come from the bureaucracy program. I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah. So, um, yeah okay, we'll see where we go with it, yeah. Um, because I, I imagine that this is kind of like a system where events from the bureaucracy program would filter in and then this program does something with it and then it goes down to the robot. Like, is that... That's generally how it works, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh -huh. But, but yeah, you know, if, if there is a bug in it, it could be at any of those three places. Yeah. The bureaucracy program, the maintenance program, the, well, it could be in four places. It could be in the... It could be in the bureaucracy program, the maintenance program, the robot management program, or the robot. Oh, uh, yeah, because the maintenance talks to the, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, can yeah. any of those four locations? Yeah. Is what logic tells you. Yeah. But, I mean, from my, my appreciation for how programs work in this game, mm -hmm. and this has probably been the first scenario where we've really had to problem mm -hmm. solve. Mm -hmm. computers um so it's new to me that's all right uh, i i figure i would be starting with the robot maintenance and working either back or forward true uh, yeah. again that's that, that's i mean that's what i'd be doing in real life if it was me yeah 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 okay cool so at this point do you want to manipulate or do you want to display uh, well, uh, you know, if, if you're looking, if you, it's, it'll be a manip it'll be a manipulate because the, the displays, you know, display boring is, stuff. Yeah, really boring. Yeah, the boring stuff. If, if you're actually doing some analysis on the software, it's going to take. It's it's more of a, a the operate. Yeah. Or, or even the write, but you know, the operate's probably the better one. That'll be enough okay. for level four. All right. Um. So. The software seems to be the robot management software seems to be um, working. It seems to be a okay. There is, however, um, mm. a subroutine that gets called maybe one time in three, roughly. Mm. That seems to that seems to um, do some uh, seems to do some sort of um, uh, uh, changing of the orders. Um, that are sent out. Oh yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that's the best way of saying it. So maybe one time in three at the moment, any order issued by the robot management program would be changed by this subroutine and cause it would then cause the robot to do something else. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's what that's what looks like happening anyway. Now that that's several hours worth of work you've just you've just yeah. done there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Doc, um, your your autopsy reveals that um, the female Rusk uh, died of um, radiation poisoning. Basically, um, there's an intense radiation burn um, in and around the area where um, her suit was torn. Um, was so the, was there a suit? Um... You know, cut with a knife or no, no, it was torn. It was definitely the edges. The edges were were ragged, um, so uh, it was it, it was torn on something, um, as opposed to um, smooth like a cut would have been. So how it was torn, well, you hard to tell, especially now that's been repaired. Um, but that's what killed her. Uh, right, intense radiation poisoning. Um, yeah. Plus, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of um, a little bit of mal, uh, malnourishment being recorded as well, uh, but that's certainly not enough. That that's that's certainly not, nowhere near enough. I mean, that's like two days in the bush type malnourishment as opposed to um, as opposed to dying of it. You know what I mean? A lot of fish in the gut. A lot of fish. In fact, nothing almost nothing but fish. And that weird sauce. And that weird sauce. The yes. raspberry sauce. <laughs> that's, that's the one. So she was obviously dining. She was obviously eating, eating, uh, at least for a couple of meals. Um, she was eating steamed fish in raspberry sauce, either through choice or through uh, necessity. It's unknown at this stage, obviously. So yes. So what do you want to do about this robot, uh, Cat? So, uh, and I don't know what that subroutine is doing. I just know that at some point it's affecting it, right? Yeah. If if you if 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 you had to guess, it it was it's a bug. Yeah. Can now, you whether change it was the interval? So does it change the interval? So instead of every one in three, it's one in a hundred. Well, if you're going to do that, you might as well take it out completely. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, I think I I want to I want to fix it, but I also want to not. Uh, uh, ruin the opportunity to try and figure out how this may have happened. Um, oh, okay. Because this is, this seems like our first real encounter with the Matrix, right? Um, is it? I don't know. Well, I, this is speculation, but yes. off, <laughs> off, off the speculation that the uh, other computer expert had gotten up to, uh, they were pretty convinced that there was some kind of thing um, causing faults in the computer systems and robots. Um, and food dispensers. And, yeah. But, yeah, we, we, we these could all be explained by computer errors. Um, they could. Mm, and kind of like how the uh, the uh, the temperature problem, Cerise has looked into that, and it seems to be completely not a physical technical problem. It's it's the, the computer system controlling it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So just on just uh, sorry, just on that Cerise. Okay. Sorry. Just. Well, yeah. If you if you if it's you're checking out the air con, the air con, you're checking out the heating systems, 
Um, something else you know that's playing up is that, as I said, is that um, um, is the uh, is the food dispensers. It might be worthwhile checking them out as well. I think we've already checked them out, and we determined it was a software problem. If that's the case, and that's the case, I can't remember one way or the other. That's why in the list of chores, mm, the technicians enough, only have two things. Cat has the rest. <laughs> Oh, well, it's, it's, it's as, as I said to you when we started this campaign, there's going to be some adventures where some people are going to have a lot to do and some people aren't. Cats, been, there's been a lot of combat and that and that and things like this is Obviously, this one's, this one's a bit more computer-related, which means cat-related. That's the yep. way it goes sometimes. Babu and Jazz are probably going to deal with the sapes since Babu has the psycho skills and Jazz and is Jazz, a friendly face yeah. to them. Yeah, exactly. And well, Doc is going to treat the lifting. patient. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, what do you want to do, Cat? You want to you want to try and you want to fix it, or do you want to investigate further, or do you want to look at something else to see how it interlinks, and then go fix it, or? or... So, when when I saw this, is the is the th is the thing that is randomly targeting the subroutine part of this program? Uh, or... well, it looks like this. It looks like this subroutine, whatever it is. Yeah. Um has been, for want of a better term, corrupted somehow. Yeah, okay. So it's not that it's not that this is a new subroutine and No. It's a modified subroutine. Gotcha. I thought it kind of sounded like it was a new subroutine. Yeah, no, sorry about that. Yeah. That that put that down to me and, my bad and, description. And it was and it was randomly choosing this new subroutine. Okay. No, no, the the subroutine itself is randomly choosing to yeah, okay. So there's like a, a random bug in that particular subroutine. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's the best way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah. And does this look like the the kind of things that we've seen before, which just seem to be like random bit flips? The, um it's this... a little bit more it's a little bit more detailed than just random bit flips. Yeah. Um because I mean random bit, bit random bit flips would just simply corrupt the software and stop, make it stop. Yeah. This is actually this is actually a little bit more um, seems to have a bit more intelligence behind it for want of a better term. Yeah, and I guess that's what I was asking. It's not well. Like, could it be random? Yeah. Well, it could be. It's, it's probably it, one in a million, one in a billion. But yeah. You know, but no. This, it, if you had to guess, you'd say there is some um, crude. Um, uh, but some purpose behind it. It's not clean code. It's not code you would write to do this. Put it that way. Yeah. It's it's pretty. It, it's the type of code that a oh that a script kitty might 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 put in to change a script to, to do some hacking with. Um, if you've ever seen a script a script kitty's changes to a script, it's messy code. It's pretty horrible stuff. Uh, you know what I mean? Or it's, electronic space worms. <laughs> electronic space worms. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, for want of a better term, yeah, why not? Uh, uh, just to keep the Sathar dream alive. Um, yeah, for cool. who? Yeah. Dream or nightmare and for whom? For yeah. you or for Cerise? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So I think I think we got some chores to do. Uh, I think that's good information. I, I think that analysis is probably enough for Cat right now. Okay. Uh, uh, so she, she will spend the day or whatever it needs to be to actually fix this routine. If okay. she, if she, yeah. Yeah, you can do it. It's a, it's basically a, um, uh, it's a, it's a right, it's a right program uh -huh. against a level four, against a level four piece of software. But now, it's going to take you several hours, if not a day or two. Yeah. Several hours, because you, you've you, you've already spent a couple of hours doing this anyway. Now, what is the right program? Roll. Um, now, for you, um, it's generally at, from mem from memory, it's a hundred percent less the level of the software. Uh -huh. um, I think. I mean, I can't. Don't have any military NSA skills, so I'm just going through your sheet while I'm talking to you. Um, and if uh, there's anything, I do have one rank or is it computers. If I can help at all, cat. Oh, yep. Okay, is that manipulate program or hang on? Give me a second. Just sorry, I just got to look something up. 
Um, I want to get this right because if, if I don't get this right, I don't, all, it will do, all it will do will stuff us around, and I don't want to do that. Alpha Dawn, Alpha Dawn, Alpha Dawn, yeah, Alpha Dawn, Alpha Dawn, Alpha Dawn, Alpha Dawn, Alpha Dawn, Alpha Dawn. Expanded rules, that's what I'm after. Skills, 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 minor surgery. No, that's not what we're after. Hang on a sec. Um, you're level four, aren't you? Level five. Oh, even better. Yeah, it's the manipulate programs role. Okay. To a, to do a rewrite. Um, do you, unless you happen, uh, you should have you should. Every time you every time you get a skill level, you should cho you should have chosen a piece of software yeah, to I learn don't. to write. I don't think I've been doing that. Well, you need to do that, yeah. um, and because if you know if you actually know how to write the write the program, you get a bonus to your role. Yeah, yeah. So, um, out of the list of software that's available, you know the ones, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know which. I don't know. <laughs> you, I just, I trust you not to be blatantly metagaming when you choose the software that you should be putting on your sheet right now. <laughs> yeah, so, but, but I, uh, on my CAC, I have a bypass security booster, a defeat security booster, an interface comps, and a prog manipulation booster. Yeah, well, the prog uh, manipulation so, booster is going to help. Yeah. Uh, uh, But also, you should, as I said, you should have, you should have, you should, you should know. Uh, so you, you, you know, you know, analyzing, analyze. You've got two listed there: analyze and computer security. I think that they were the ones that I chose at first, uh, at start. Yeah. yeah, first and second level. Yeah. Well, you need to choose two. You need to choose three more if you're level five. Yeah. And as I said, I trust you not to be too blatantly metagaming. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, let me. So yes, and that goes for you too, Cerise. I don't know if you've chosen the computer language. You know? No, I didn't know. Yeah, you need to, every time you every time you get a level, a level of computer, you get to learn one of the languages that you know and can write automatically, and you get a bonus, a bonus to a bonus to it when you know that language. And just for the both of you, you can buy extra languages for four experience points a shot. Or extra software, you know what I mean? Extra programming software. Let's let's just play this as though I don't have a bonus. Okay. And I'll 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 just take the, the ten for the manipulate okay. probs. Cool. Cool. That's up to you. I don't mind. Uh, and um, yeah, I'll figure that out out of game because I'm already hogging a lot of the game time today anyway. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, we're trying to keep things. We're trying to keep. I mean, it, it's a it's a computer heavy adventure, yeah, this, this, yeah. this section anyway. Um, so this is without the CAC boost. Mm hmm. And I think that'll be OK. Yeah, it's OK. All right. So you spend a couple of hours and you manage to, to uh, fix the bug in the in the in that thing let me just make a note for myself um, i'm just going to call it fixed stuff <laughs> yeah yeah mtrm right that's 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 it that one fixed so far if it needs fixing but there you go um, so what's everybody else doing while it's going on? I mean, there's going to be a lot of time, a lot of in-game time where people are doing things like repairing walkways and fill pipes and software and robots and all sorts of stuff, right? Which is why it's a 36 days before you get back into contact. It's going to take you that while to do it. So while, 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 while Kat is working on the computers, does somebody want to tackle one of the other chores that, you, that somebody wrote down? 
Yeah, um, Volk and I can go work on the fuel lines and the bridge. All right, well, that's going to take several days. How, what, what's the general plan of attack for that, boys? Uh, the first, the general plan of attack would be to get some, basically some railings across the gap so that we can, you know, safely work, get some scaffolding to, to cover the breach. Yep, and okay. And, and then it. eventually, and then eventually work on um, the, the fuel, fuel lines. lines. All right. So where do you think you're going to get the scaffolding from? Or the, the girders and that from? I thought there was some repair component somewhere. Uh, so, possibly, um, but sorry, where I was, was it? I, I know where it is. I'm saying, you, you know. No, I thought we came across some. I, I don't remember where. Yeah, so in the F1 room, uh, there's some two, uh, there's girders. So we'll use those girders. Because uh, currently the bridge, we I welded um, two locker doors. doors to yep. one of each side to make a bridge. Mm -hmm. But we'll replace that with some girders and whatnot right, well, to make it more stable. All right. Well, um, um, the, uh, sorry, go on. The only thing that I would mention is that we, if we're going to take, if we're on a task that requires days, uh, we probably want to make sure one of the technicians changes over the canisters. Uh, so that we can get more monies. Uh, although I'm a little bit suspicious that if we start flowing this material again into this canister, where the more bugs are going to pop up. But YOLO, money. Um, <laughs> I, All right, I, so, I, yeah. so go on, yeah. I don't know whether these bugs are can, related to the refining process or not, um, or whether bringing that material up into the ship is making it worse, but... I guess we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely, if there's an automated collection process going on, we'll keep those canisters. Yeah, there is. And the current, up. Yeah, the current and that's probably is a half hour every six hours or something. Uh, so, yeah, something on that. Probably, maybe, maybe not even that frequent. Um, I'd have to check the details. Um, but yeah, um, okay. Um, so if you're going to swap a canister over, I need you to. I need somebody to make me a. Um, where is it? I've lost it. Uh, an operate machinery role. And have a rad suit. Yeah. And have a rad suit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. Cerise, Cerise, you managed to uh, change one of the canisters over. You know how to do it. For you, it's going to be automatic from now on. Cool. All right. I don't know if anyone else with technician skill wants to have a crack at it who's not busy doing other stuff. Well, if it's just to learn how to do it, then. Yeah, okay. So you, so you two know how to change the canisters over. Um, obviously, you grab some spare canisters from, I think it was F1, maybe somewhere else. I can't remember, um, and yes. swap them over and and store them. I mean, where are you going to these full ones? Where are you going to put the full ones? Where are you going to store them? A three. Cool. As long as I know. Uh, well, let's. Hey, Cat. Quick question: Would store? Where should we store them? Since you're the chemist. Uh, well, I mean, they're pressurized and they need to be cool. They can't, uh, so not in a place where they're going to get shot. Uh, as far, well, as far as cooling is concerned, don't forget it was plus 10 degrees Celsius in the refining room and in the refining area and they were fine. True. Yeah. All right. And in the past, when the platform has been working properly, they've transferred the canisters to the shuttle and back up to the main ship. So room temperature was probably fine putting them in a in a reactor where it's going to get over room temperature yeah that's probably going to be an issue for you <laughs> but, but where, um, where were they storing the canisters before when they were filling them out up throughout the time they would store it somewhere right and yeah, then they, they would. loaded onto the ship yep so where did they I store think they it they were stored in f1 they were there's okay. along one of the walls of f1 is a, is a rack with 20 slots all right. Okay. Two of those slots, two of those slots are empty. Yeah. The others hold um, three tanks, indicating they're full, and fifteen empty tanks. Got it. All right. Each full tank weighs twenty kilos. 
each empty tank weighs 12 kilos. Yeah, so we'll just store them there. It's close enough. Yeah. All right. So, and obviously that's where you get the empties from. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. that's fine. If we wanted to be super paranoid, uh, putting them in the ob observation gallery would uh, mean that they're as far away from us as possible. But I don't know how <laughs> paranoid we are. Yeah, well, uh, it's up to you guys. <laughs> I think in the rack is fine. Yeah, in the rack. Okay, look, um, so um, uh, removing girders. Okay, to get to get to take the, the to take the, the the welded doors out, put the girders in, and then put some flooring down, and maybe some side some flooring down. That's um, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Six. That's about that's ten. Don't don't roll them yet. That's ten uh, repair rolls, all up between the two of you. All right. If you want to put some side walls up, um, uh, to basically in effect reseal that corridor, um, so that it's you got no chance of being blown out. Um, that that would be another six six uh, man rolls. Oh, I totally repair forgot. Rolls. We need to. The electrical cables that are displayed at the that are shown, and then the electrical, that. yeah, and the electrical electrical cables will need another four. So that's um, twenty man rolls of repair over over a couple of days. Okay, so while you do that, I'm just going to get a, grab a cold drink, guys. Wait a sec. Yeah, because the electrical cords, some of the uh, cords are no longer insulated. The insulation wore off for some reason, so we have to do. So we should fix that. Do you want to do half that work, Vok? Uh, I'm not as good as you. Any of the more dangerous stuff I do, and then the less dangerous stuff you do. Or things with a higher negative consequence. Are we able to help each other, right? So if I do a repair roll, I can help you on your rolls? Yeah, but I think we want to cut down the repair time by working independently rather than... well. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Actually, well, your repair is 100, my repair is than... 75, so. Yeah. I mean, actually, two people working together are faster than two people working independently in most chores, most manual labor. Do you want me to roll all 20? I can roll all 20. I don't care. Yeah. You're better at it than me, and Voc will just assist you throughout. And that's why you can't hear me. I'm on mute. Um, you better off. You better off rolling ten each, guys. Otherwise, it's going to take you twice as long. It is okay. Okay, so roll ten, right? Yeah. All right. I made all the first ten. All right. Um, in the meantime, Babu. Yep. Um, look, um, it's probably going to be a pretty good idea if you were to um do some um some psycho uh, um. Therapy on uh, them. Yeah, it's general, just general, just general stuff. Not the sapes on the humans, on us, on you guys. Because oh. um, you're in a, you're, it's it's just rather a stressful situation, and with all the work and the fact you've got this unknown computer bug or whatever it is, and, and things like that, um, it probably wouldn't hurt. To, it probably wouldn't hurt to to do some um, to do uh, some psychopathology. Uh, or... Yes, that's what I'm thinking of. Some psychopathology. On everybody, including yourself, um, just to keep everybody sane and, and morale up and things like that. Um, Doc, yeah, you there, Paul, you are again in, in a similar in a similar vein to uh, the people's mental health. Their physical health over the, the next couple of days is probably going to be worthwhile keeping an eye on as well. Um, so, um, generally, a um, Oh, I don't know. Call me in the morning. Yeah, gen just general, general, general diagnostics. Just some general diagnostic roles, and if anything shows up, you know, whatever. But 
Um, this is just general keeping the team healthy over the next couple of days while all this work goes on. Um, and as far as raw muscles are concerned, I'm sure that Jazz and Babu and that can help out lugging, um, lugging uh, girders and things around for the for the repair guys. Can we get the seeps to do that? Uh, you, yeah. you can oh. try. Okay. Well, if we have to try to get them to do it, then. Yeah. Um, so look, over the next couple of days. As I said, uh, you do some you do some of this repair work. Um, you're swapping over canisters every day or so, whatever. Um, um, times in a row. Uh, Babu is sending you mad, uh, <laughs> as opposed to helping you. Um, he's making your he's making your anxieties worse, not better. Well done. Uh, um, and um, Kat's uh, doing a lot of stuff with the, with getting software rewritten. You've got uh, what do you want to do after, once you've got that maintenance that, that um, robot maintenance software fixed? Do you want to uh, call ideally... the? Sorry, oh, sorry. Uh, no, no, ideally, I'd like to fix the life support systems for the temperature because if we can get the temperature up, then maybe the matrix is not a problem, right? It's a hypothesis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. no, I don't get a good read on poker, Doc. Yeah. yeah. That's not the first time you psychologically scarred me. <laughs> um, so, uh, Cat's priority would be the uh, the uh, temperature and then the food systems, I think. Uh, does well, that, does that... that sound like a good priority to everybody else? Or would you flip them around? Uh, are we having food problems yet? Well, uh, it's the same. It's the same fish in raspberry sauce. Yeah. And the scape, the scape, the sape food dispenser comes up short a couple of times oh, in dear. terms of meals. Yeah. So you got some hungry, angry sapes around. Yeah. Okay. So it's up to you. I still think the temperature first, because then we can get out of these stinking suits. Because I imagine they're quite squatty and grimy by now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to manipulate program for the... Yeah, just give me a second. I'm just checking some notes. Oh, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing um, you note over the next couple of days. Um, the bloody showers don't work properly. Great. Um, they're either boiling hot, in which case you scored yourselves, or they're ice cold. And this and, is a new problem? Well, it's one you haven't discovered before. Okay. Um, again, that's also probably the life support system that's controlling that. Yeah. Um, give me a second. Oh, yeah, this is all the one program, isn't it? Like The, the life support? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hang on a sec. Um, So if you hadn't worked it out already, um, there are actually two life support systems, a main and a backup. Yeah, yeah, um, we, yeah, we, uh, yeah I wasn't sure if you'd, you'd figure, figure that out yet. Yeah. Um, and we were wondering whether we should just flip it over to the backup or not. But Kat Yeah, that's one, looked, that's one thing yeah. you were wondering, yes. Yeah. I forgot about that. But given how this thing is working out, the backup could be just as messed up as the primary. Yeah. And don't forget that there are two life support pieces of software, one on the life support program and one on the main, one on the life support computer, and one on the main computer, don't forget. Ah, I didn't, I do not remember that. Uh, so let me write ah. that down. Well, why don't you spend some time actually mapping out the computer system properly? Sure. Well, it's an idea, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so that's T1. So T1 terminal one is connected to the JMN. And JGL. And yeah, everything's connected to JGL. 
No uh, evening. <laughs> uh, so that has life support. The the MN has life support bureaucracy. It's got computer lockout. Yeah. Computer security, bureaucracy, alarm, installation security, and life support for the primary life support system. Gotcha. Okay. And The oh, well, that's interesting. Um, the computer lockout software connects to everything inside the JMN. Yep. Um, the bureaucracy program connects to everything except the computer lock, except the computer security. Except the computer security. Yep. Mm hmm. Um, and the alarm connects to the installation security and vice versa. And there's also a communication channel from the computer security software over to the communication suite on the JGL. Oh, okay. Which is interesting, I thought. Mm. So that's the JMN. Yeah. What do you want? To, what are you looking at next, or whatever? I'm thinking that I need to change the way that I'm taking these notes. <laughs> it would be so much nicer if this game had a player map. Um, I know, I know. It's. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, it's a matter of me having the time to do one up for you properly. So you're on terminal one, you said, which is in the main computer room of, yeah. um, e, of e, the e, module E. So uh, the way that I'm getting, the way that I'm remembering this, um, the, the JLS is actually the backup life support system? Uh, yes, that's, that is what your analysis is telling you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I guess I would want to f I would want to debug the um, the primary life support program on the main system. Yeah. Yep. 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 And, yep. and debug it on. And I guess the other one isn't running. So is are these programs that you can actually debug? Or would it be just reading code and very painful? Oh, well, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay. Well, I'd like to do that for both. Right. Uh, and just figure that out. Uh, and then I guess, yeah, because figuring out this, um, whether it's better to uh, switch over to the backup or whether it's better to fix the primary, that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out. Yep, 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 yep. Understood. Okay, what are we looking at here? Okay, hang on a sec. Um, I think what I'll do is after this session ends, I'll draw up like a, a draw.io yep. diagram of this with the sure. stuff that I've written down and you can just tell me what I got wrong and where the missing bits are. 
the bits that I already yep. know. Yep, 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 can do. Just so that I have it right, um, which which uh, program on the main was connected to the JGL security program? Uh, hang on, give me a second. I'll go away. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, there's, there's a lot of complicated, not complicated, but complex detail. I've just got to make sure I understand exactly what's going on, even though I've read this myself several times. Yeah. Ah, okay. Right. Ah, uh, sorry. You, the question was. Um, that's not the map. That's you, the, uh, you were saying that there was a program on the JMN yeah. that was connected to the JGL security program. No, there is no JGL security program. Oh, okay. So no, it's the J. It's the JMN. It's the JMN com computer security program oh, that's yeah? connecting to the communications program on the JGL. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know why, but that's the way it does. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, so you wanted to look at the life. The the MN. LS software, yes? Yeah. The life support software. Okay. Because that's the one that's currently working. So That's the one that's currently working, yes. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> All right. Can you uh, give me a manipulate ro a program role for that one? Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Um, it takes you a lot longer than necessary than what, you normally would. What level was that one? The uh, it's a level support? one. Oh, no, it's level one. I'm looking at the so this computer, not the software. Sorry. Um, and there's a plus the, 10 on there as well. So it would be. Well, yeah, I know. Um, that's what threw me. Um, the, um, it's reporting back. The, 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 the MNLS software is reporting back to the bureaucracy software that the temperature in the, in the platforms um, at um, 20 degrees Celsius. Balls. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, it can be set, by the way, mm. um, it can be set from anywhere from zero to 30 degrees. And the okay. oxygen level and the oxygen level can be set from fifteen to thirty percent. Normal is about twenty one percent, as you would expect. And it's currently set to twenty. Uh, it's currently reporting it's set to twenty. Yes. Okay, so let me let me make sure this is super clear. Um, the bureaucracy <laughs> for uh, the 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 life support system is set to be at twenty, and the bureaucracy system is saying that the actual temperature of the Everywhere is 20, or am um, I misinterpreting that? You're misinterpreting it. The life support system is saying it's set to 20. Okay. And it's reporting that to the bureaucracy program. So the bureaucracy program thinking, well, everything's okay, so why not leave it like it is? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So realistically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, 
And do I have an idea why this is reporting 20 to the bureaucracy system? Uh, no, you need another roll for that one, please. All right. Uh, looking over the course of a couple of hours, there yep. appears to be a um, coding bug in the life support software. Um, that is reporting. It's almost like it's been hard coded to report 20 degrees, no matter what the temperature is. It would have been so much funnier if it was like using Fahrenheit instead of Celsius or something. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, Wrong no. unit bugs. Wrong uh, unit <laughs> bugs. Yeah, okay. they, they happen. Okay, uh, cool. Uh, well, if that's the case, then uh, uh, Cat would like to spend the time to fix that bug and All right. link so, it up to um, the appropriate sensors. Yeah. Um, look, um, so over the course of a couple of hours, again, you managed, yeah. you managed to get rid of that bug and the temperature starts to rise across the platform. Excellent. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so uh, what, just give me a second, I just need to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Um, <laughs> look, um, guys, um, you, 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 uh, individuals working on repairing the, uh, the A3 corridor. Um, about, oh, hang on, let me see. Awesome dice. About, uh, six hours, give or take after the temperature in the platform reaches about 20 degrees, um, apart from in corridor A2, which is still open to the outside areas, um, the door, the hatchway into F1, which you happen to be heading towards to get some more material, um, locks. Locking us into F1 or locking us out of F1? Locking you in, locking you into A3. Okay. Can I? So when you, uh, can you see what? if I can repair it? Um, you can have a, an attempt at repairing it. Yeah. Or bypass it if I can't repair it. Yeah. Same thing. Um, yeah, it, look, it, it takes you a while. It, it's not, it, it just, you're putting a, um, um, uh, the access security code or whatever it is, is normally that you have, you have in your, uh, the shuttle dump, I think, um, doesn't work, but you manage to bypass it, uh, bypass the security and get the hatch opened um, the, from the corridor into A3. Do um, you want to do this, do you, when you move forward to the other hatch, the one actually into F1, it's also locked. Oh. And you managed to bypass it as well. So those two doors are those two doors are um, are, are unlocked. Um, so yeah. Um, so I'll I'll just make a, a note that um, it appears the systems are trying to keep us from repairing. If that's what's happening, that's my assumption. Well, it, would it be that, or would it be trying to lock the very cold room out of the warm part of the system? <laughs> like, would that be something that the system would do to, like, lock off a damaged part of the ship? Um, no, because it, well, who knows? But, I mean, that, that type of thing is normally controlled by the information security system. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the installation security system. Yeah. Um... And, <clears throat> pardon me, while there is a link 
via the bureaucracy program between the life support, which would control the temperature, and the installation security which would control the doors. Whether there's been any any manipulation of that link or not, you have you have no idea at this stage. Yeah. Balls. Okay. There's nothing stopping you checking it out, of course. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, I feel like that should go under the uh, fixing the safe food machine. Uh, sure. As as far as priorities go, uh, given that Ceres just bypassed those locks when they were they were locked. Yeah, they're not very they're not very strong locks, but no. Yeah. All right. So you're you're in. Uh, you're still on. You're still on the terminal one. I take it. Uh, I assume that that life support system is the one that's powering the two food dispensers. It is. Yep. Do you want to look for that one? That'll be another manipulate program role for that. Yep. Um, so, um, yeah, you managed to find the routines that look after the food. Um, and incidentally, the showers as well. It's very close. It's very close together in terms of physical space, physical distance inside the code. Good. Um, again, there's there's it's there's buggy code around that area, which you can fix if you wanted to. Yes, please. Roll, please. Do you want two or just one? Uh, well, it's close enough together. It's now you better give me two. They, they are two different functions. Ba bow. Okay, you managed to fix you managed to fix the safe food dispenser. Mm -hmm. It's now all right, but you're still stuck eating boiled fish and raspberry sauce. Yeah. Okay, and if you want to do the showers as well, and the showers are fixed. Way fixed. So at least you can get clean. The, the, the showers have perfectly temperatured water. We can yeah. clean the fish too. <laughs> <laughs> you clean the fish. <laughs> so, um, you do it. Yeah. So, I mean, overnight, you guys obviously have a break, and you know, um, I'm assuming you're going to be using um, B1 as your um, base of operations for sleeping. It is yeah. three quarters. Yeah. Okay. Um, a couple of things. Um, the door. And I hate to say this, the door from A3 to the B1 corridor, that hatch is locked. Yep. Cerise or Voke. Um, and it's... <laughs> Hi, Fel. You do. You do it. <laughs> That's why you do the repair rolls. Okay, so that and also the ha the actual hatch from the corridor into B one is also locked. And open locks is actually ten percent. Yeah, it's not higher. open locks. It's yeah, it's actually a repair. Um, to fix it. Um, and you uh, and Cat, you go to uh, you, you're you you're heading back to B one through D one and C one, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, the door from E one. To the to the the door from E one to D one, it's locked. Hang on a minute, slow no, down. No, hang on. You have you, you're not over there, mate. Yeah. Oh. You're in B one. Cat's in E one. Bravo one versus Echo one. If that's the case, then she's going to have to go back to Terminal one and deal with this information security program. If, if, if that's what you want to do. Yeah, um, this is a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, information security or installation security? Installation. Uh, it was the installation security that controls all the locks and stuff and security yeah, cameras and stuff. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, and, the, and, the, and the mounted gun platforms. The turrets, there. if we hadn't destroyed them, yeah. If you hadn't destroyed them, yes, exactly. Yep. It's buggy. Yeah. So this isn't a fail. Good. Okay. Um, all the doors unlock. They're still closed, but they all unlock. Excellent. Cool. And that so was you another make... basically day. Yeah, that's not well, yeah. So you guys are so you guys um yeah, 
you're, you're still stuck with eating boiled fish and you know you, you get a few complaints from people about why we're we still eating boiled fish cat <laughs> yeah i like i got most of it fixed uh yeah at least it's nice and warm yeah all right um overnight um can i get can i get current stamina rolls which is stamina rolls because everyone's on full hit points can i get current stamina rolls off everybody please oh, actually no can i get current stamina rolls with a minus five penalty off everybody please oh a minus five i'll gladly do a minus five no, a pe- okay a plus five penalty you know what i mean the penalty should have given it away uh oh oh we need to set our dice colors yeah, that's you need to redo that too. Sorry, guys, I should have mentioned that. Um, so if you if you failed that roll, um, you take um, a further D five damage. So everybody takes five points of damage, and those who failed take an extra D five points of damage. Those who passed that initial roll wake up cold those who failed it wake up later cold um cat uh, and everybody um sometime in, sometime during the night um you, you 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 the temperature's dropped again and you're actually breathing fog you know what i mean when it's that's that cold son of a bitch and the temperature's back down around the minus 10 mark All right. Is is the is the safe food machine broken again? Is the hot water busted? Is everything um, back to normal? Uh, well, everything. Uh, well, no, no, no. Nothing's back to normal. Um, you can't. Yeah, the shower, the showers are gone. The 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 shower, the sanitation facilities are stuffed again. Um, and if you go over to the safe area, um, well, the main problem with the safe machine was it wasn't. It was only dispen- wasn't dispensing enough. So. Are you going to start dispensing food from the safe, safe, the safe machine? It's the middle yeah, of the night, Yeah, true. We won't. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking that it was all too easy to fix this stuff. Damn. Oh, you fixed it. It just it's, got broken again. Exactly. The interesting thing is that. It still got broken, even though we fixed the temperature. Mm. Well, Doc, can you give me a logic roll, please? Or an intuition roll, or an average of both, whichever you prefer. Doc Pero adds to the adds to the conversation by noting that um, some organisms can survive in very, very high temperatures and some organisms can survive in very, very low temperatures. And it may require a higher temperature than you got the platform to, to get rid of or kill whatever you want to say, how you want to say it. Because don't forget the platform would have been at 20 20 degrees during the initial injection inverted inverted commas you know air air quotes so you might have to make the temperature go higher is what he speculates yeah or wear an extra blanket Uh, well yeah i think you want to get rid i I think i think hang on correct me if i'm wrong but is the general consensus or the general thinking being that you're in that the, the, the electronics of the platform have been infected by something and that something is is actually alive as opposed to just whatever and that thing likes cold temperatures because let's face it ventru is very cold and high temperature will kill it yeah well, um, my, it, it, yeah. It, 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 my that's an, that's me something that's me making assumptions on basically on what I've heard you guys say. Yeah, it doesn't make sense as to 
an electric uh, a programming virus have a preference as to whether or not what temperature it's at only a no. living creature really would well you could be dealing with a with a, a living creature obviously not a carbon based creature. yeah well it but it was slower to spread when it was warmer and warmer rooms that's that doesn't true. matter with a computer virus No, you're right. It doesn't. But if you're not, if you're talking a living being, it would. That it would. Yeah. So it's probably a living being. Yeah. It's just probably not a biologically carbon-based living being. Was Was there a? I remember we came across a bunch of scanners somewhere. Was there oh, a scanners. Was there a bio scanner? And is anybody? Yes, there was a bioscanner. Can anybody like use that to check out the computer systems? Like we know that the life support is being affected. Could could someone qualified be able to scan the um, the main computer for any life forms that the bioscanner would pick up? That would probably be Doc. It would probably would be the Doc, and it would be a diagnosis role if he the Doc were to do that. The trouble is, the bio scanners are, 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 are tuned for carbon-based life forms. Mm. I mean, the 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 next the next thing to do would be to do another round of bug fixing and crank the heat as high as it will go. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but we're not, uh, I mean, we, we can't be certain whether that's actually going to solve the problem or not, but it's worth a try. Yeah. Um, I'll also point out that the external maintenance bot is still taking apart F, F module. Oh yeah. If I thought we dealt with that yesterday. Nope. Nope. No. Uh, well, well then we'll, we'll deal with it today and we'll turn it off. So was it, so did that not get fixed by fixing the robot management program or did yeah, but it just you, break you again? Didn't, no, well, you didn't tell me you were going to do anything. You, all you did was fix it. You didn't actually tell it to stop doing what it was doing. Mm. I assumed that something would kick in and say, hey, yeah, you probably no, need to start no, repairing. No, 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 no. Stupid no, no. computers. Uh, well, <laughs> yes. You should know that. Computers are stupid. They do exactly what you tell it to do and nothing else. And you didn't tell it to do anything. Fair. I thought if anyone would re remember that, it would be you, dude. You work with them every day. Mm. Mm. Anywho. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, all right. I don't well, think everyone should sleep all at the same time either. I think uh, if the temperature goes down, we need to have a kind of either set up an automated thermal alert or we can go old school and have someone watch the party. Cat might well, be you... able to do that with her body calm. I took 10 points of damage while asleep. Yeah, basically, you, in effect, yes. You can first aid yourself. You can first aid that back if you want, by the way, Doc. Yeah, that can kill you. What first aid you back? Well, that too. <laughs> do you want to do this first aid roll for everybody? Because everybody took damage. Yeah, but I'd like to figure out how we're going to stop ourselves from from dying in the cold harshness of space. Well, the technicians could probably rig rig up a some sort of sensor, uh, a, a independent alarm sensor, if they wanted um, to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was initially thinking just work and shift so that if it gets cold, we can. Oh, well, you do that too. React to it. But that makes yeah, sense. setting up a, an alarm so that if it gets cold or gets hot, we get notified and woken up. Well, your toxic rate gauge, it does radiation, it does oxygen, it does poisons, it doesn't do temperature. And my atmosphere has. Does Your atmosphere does. Yeah, you could probably set up something that way. Yeah. Uh, I, I just don't have the, the the brain prog yet. 
uh, so uh, so I don't have a, a a programmable computer to be able to. Oh, you don't have the master prog yeah. one, and the no, one that does yet. where you say, okay, if it is eight o'clock in the evening, set an alarm. You know that. Yeah, one. no, I have pretty crude reactionary stuff at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you. Stab in the eye. Yeah, someone's stabbed in the eye. Um. You can set an uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can you, the, the the atmosphere. Well, you can just set an alarm on it, surely. I have no, I can't remember. I think you can. I thought it was an active type, like you actually had to say, "Take a reading now," type thing. Yeah, but you I mean I mean you you I mean you'll have to manipulate the program to do it. But I can't see why you couldn't say every five minutes or every ten minutes, or even every half an hour to an hour, do a reading, and if it, and if it's below this, sound an alarm. Yeah, I, mm, I, I. I mean, it'd be, you'd have to hack it because you don't have the master control software. Yeah. But there's there's no reason why you couldn't hack it with your skills. But I, I mean, if we just work in shifts, we'll be fine, and you don't it's have fine. to spend yeah. an hour sure. working on that. Instead, you can spend sure. that hour working on the computer stuff. Yeah, sure. I'd, sure. I, sh sure. I should go. Uh, Operate computer and tell that bot to start fixing things. Um, uh, sure. Um, actually, you've got to do that from. I got to do that from three. From terminal three, which is in area C. E one anyway, area C. Is it? Yeah, it's. It's there. Oh yeah, the maintenance support. That is too. Yep, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, but because I'm paranoid, I guess I should check. <laughs> You're always Pro paranoid. I guess I should check the program before I. Yeah. <sighs> well, I checked it good. Okay, what were you checking for? Sorry, uh, which, I, what, what I was checking? checking to see whether that bug was back. Um, it, which bug in which system in so, which software? So, so the robot management, the ah. bug, the the subroutine that was giving yeah, yeah. the wrong command every X times. Yeah. Um, no, it's not. Okay. It's in a different subroutine than the original one, but and it's different code, but it's the same general effect. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So we, it's not the same bug, but it's a similar type of bug. Yeah, with the same net effect. Yeah, gotcha. All right, I'll be writing that bug out of it and giving it a command. Okay, go for your life. Okay, uh, and what command are you giving the robot? Repair shit. Repair shit. <laughs> Undo your previous handiwork, please. Okay, repair, repair the repair thing. Okay, well, um, the, the the according to the um, the robot management um, software, the robot has received and acknowledged that order. Was its order already to repair shit? Uh, no, it wasn't. Okay, so it was. What was its current? What was it order before I gave it the new order? Um, oh, look from the, sorry from uh, from the uh, from the robot management software. The order yeah. was uh, do just do, do general maintenance on the um, do general maintenance on the um, on the system. Oh, okay. the robot itself is corrupted, just like Not the other robots. No, the other robot, the sparring robot was corrupted. We encountered another robot that was corrupted. Not necessarily because um, the the command to do general maintenance on the outside of the platform may have been corrupted by the subroutine that that cats originally fixed. Oh, all right, cool. But now that that particular code is no longer there, you can be you you can be pretty certain that the command that's gone out is to fix the fix the damage, as requested. Well, one of and the... as I said, and as I said, the robot the software is reporting that the robot has received and acknowledged that command. The next technician to go to F one will look out the door and see. Okay. What the robot's when doing. When you're next doing that, no worries. What's your next step, Cat? Uh, you said you wanted to do two things. Yeah, going to uh, Terminal 1 
Uh, mm -hmm. So, the bug came back to, to the maintenance system, so I think that switching over to the backup life support probably isn't going to do much good. They're all getting busted. Uh, I mean, it could. Maybe the life support isn't infected, but we have no real way of detecting that or knowing that. Uh, well, there is there is a way of turning the life support system on manually. You do, you do know that. Yeah, but I'm worried that that could be worse than the situation that we have right now. Oh, wow. That's... <laughs> That's natural paranoia for a player, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so you made all those first aid rolls, or most of those first aid rolls, Doc, I see? Except the one where yeah, he stabbed me and then did surgery for it. Oh, well, there you go. So everyone should be on full hit points again. Yep. Cool. Okay, so I guess I'll... I'll go to the main computer and mm -hmm. look at the life support, uh, the yep. temperature control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, it's not the same bug, but it's a different bug in the same, doing the same job, in yep. else producing the same result. I. So it looks like it looks like the software's been in effect reinfected. Yeah. All right, here's our science experiment for the day. Uh, so <laughs> I, like I, you say that. I, 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 I fixed the bug. Uh, now I, I roll an operate to yeah. cr crank the temperature. Uh huh. Well, you can crank it as high as 30 degrees. I'll set it to 30. Okay. So um, over the next hour or so, the temperature rises to about 30 degrees. Everybody's starting to sweat because 30 degrees is quite warm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, the temperature does go to 30 degrees. Excellent. Anything else you'd like to do? By the way, um, not long after the temperature reaches 30 degrees, um, one of the uh, one of the guys doing the repairs on A2 happens to uh, to be back in uh, room F1 as requested, uh, and looks around the looks around the door into uh, F2, and it appears that the maintenance robot is still dismembering the platform. I think Jazz needs to fix this problem once and for all. <laughs> no, Jazz no, no. We'll, we'll go and we'll turn it off. <laughs> Set it free. Set it free. All right. Well, how do you um, do that? Because it's half outside the platform in the wind. So you're going to have to be very careful how to do this if you're going to I, go and turn it off. I, I, I joke. I think uh, I can send it a shutdown command from the computer. Can I not? So you can certainly try and do that, yeah. I'll try and do that before we start shooting heavy, like, lasers set at 20 SEU at this robot. I was more along the lines, thinking along the lines of Cerise was going to go out there and shut it down and drag it in, yep. but that was me. Um, so, yes, you send a, you send a, a, a shutdown command to the um, maintenance robot, and, again, the software reports back that the robot has um, uh, received and acknowledged that command. Yeah. I guess if somebody's in F1, can they tell me whether it's still doing its thing? Uh, Voke, it's still doing its thing. All right. Uh, you got to take some more drastic action. Yep, so Cerise and I will, and we'll take Jazz too. <laughs> yeah, and? And the three of us, well, we'll tie Cerise, you know... We'll tie Cerise to a rope, to some microline. We'll have two ropes around him. And then we'll send him out to go deactivate it. I, Her, I, I, by the way. Her, yep. I, I think this would be the point where Thomas would say, as Jazz, it's pretty close. How hard can this shot be? I'll just, I just, <laughs> yeah. I'll just shoot it with my laser. <laughs> the question is, do you want to shoot it or do you want to try and repair it? Because you will need to be able to fix that damage yeah we'll need it to fit the damage but <laughs> cerise and i can do it, it yeah that's okay all right. Fair enough. all right well okay um who, who who's tying the knots off uh, uh i was just looking at jazz's sheet i don't think jazz has any like survival skills so it's probably up to the technicians yeah uh Cerise or Vogue, come on. 
Was anybody a star scout? Is it a what skill are you? <laughs> star scout. <laughs> uh, dude. Uh, I mean, what what are we gonna? Is it logic? Is it? No, it's it's a dex check actually. Oh, oh I'll I'll tie them off. No, I'll do it. How many do you want? Uh, well, two. One for your weight. One for you. One one for each end of the rope. Folk ties him off. Gets oh. in Cerise's way and ties him off himself. All right. So what's the plan, Cerise? You're going to jump out onto the robot, open it up, and turn it off, and then make sure, and then try and drag it back inside. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, because Cat uh, couldn't get it with the computer, right? Well, the robot maintenance software seems to be working correctly, but the robot isn't. Is what your the current thinking is? Um. Yeah, I'll I'll go out to it with uh, inertia screen and skin suit. Thank you. And um, try to deactivate it out there. Once and I get it deactivated, I'll clip it in, and we can bring it in. Yep. Okay. So, um, can you give me just can you just give me a quick initiative roll, please? Okay. So as you, oh, oh yeah okay as you approach the um as you approach the robot um it takes a swing at you with one of its with one of its um arms and manages to clip you uh and does uh, eleven points of impact damage which the skin suit will yeah etc 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 yep. Okay, um, I need a, I need you to give me a dex check to latch onto it because you are in difficult conditions out in the wind and blowing and all the rest of it. And you managed to successfully grab hold of it. I need a roll off you, please, to um, uh, get the hatch open and get it turned off as per normal. And then I need a, and then I need a further dex check to make sure you latch onto it so it doesn't float away on you or blow away on you or fall off the platform or whatever. Um, is that just to activate, deactivate? Yeah, just an activate, de deactivate roll. That's per normal. Okay. And then you said one more dex check. Check, yeah, just to grab onto it, make sure it doesn't fall off and f f uh oh. Well, See, it's um, Reese's dexterity has been lacking ever since she got put in that freeze field back on Alcazar. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, no, the, unfortunately, the robot, um, when you de deactivate it, it slips from your grip and falls into the atmosphere of, um, uh, of Ventru. No, no, no. Wait, platform. wait, wait, Matt. Matt, you told us that it had maglev things. Yeah. And that even and if you, you deactivated turned, the just, robot, those would still be on. I don't recall saying that. That's okay. I don't care that we lose the robot. It's not... We lose it? Enough. Okay. Mm. You could check out one of the other robots, by the way. That you that that are aboard and deactivated. Well, they're not the external maintenance though. So no, they're not. The external maintenance had the magnetic had the magnets. So if if we had somebody good with robotics, we could try to reprogram one to return to fixing. But I'd rather spend my time actually repairing than. Well, you've got plenty of time. You got plenty of time up your sleeve. Don't forget. Uh, it's not that important anymore. Sure, if that's what you think. Well, I, as long as I'm it's just, not doing more think, damage. Just, yeah. I, 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 is anybody concerned that we're going to go another 30 days without a reactor maintenance robot when we're sitting on seven reactors? I was waiting for somebody to think about that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was too, but can you ensure that it's not going to do something and screw up the reactors itself? Well... To be sure, you'd have to look at both the computer maintenance software and the robot itself. Well, Volk will do... How long does it take us to fix the bridge? Oh, several days. You've got to, you know, okay. three, you know, a good week or more because you've got to lay pipe, you've got to lay, electric, you've got to lay electricity lines, you've got to do structural stuff. Yeah, you know, I got you all those roles at once, but that's, okay, that's well, like something like a, a week or more, 10 days worth of work or more. Yeah, then Voke doesn't have time to be a nuclear engineer. So, yeah, we need the bot. 
yeah. Well, the well the bot's down in the in the the bot is down in the uh, the reactor room. Yeah. Where you left it, and you'll need an in suit to get to it. And luckily, Cerise has got an in suit now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess. Uh, Cat's pretty keen to figure out what happens tonight, uh, because if everything, if all these bugs reset, then we got a huge problem. Uh, and fixing robots might actually be a waste of time if they're going to get reboned every night or over a period of time. Uh, so, yeah, I think the the science experiment of of today is probably worth leaving go before we uh do any robot repairs that may or may not work sure no worries uh and if cat has time she'll uh try and fix the bugs in the food vending machines and, yep, the, right. and yep. the installation security okay so well that's that's two rolls for the vending two rolls for the food machine one for the um showers and one for the computer security if that's what you want to do yeah, that'll take you the rest of the day, though. Yeah, that's fine. I I, I really want to fix all of the known issues and see if they come back. Sure. Um. So what's where? What was that for? Let's say that's the safe vending machine, and then the yep. human vending again, machine. Again, again, the bug that the bug that was causing the problem in the first place is not there anymore because yeah. you fixed it. But there's a similar bug elsewhere that has the same general effect. Yeah. That wasn't there before. And that, which has now been fixed. Yeah. And the second vending machine, that's the one for the, at yes. least, at least you're not going to have, at least you're not going to have um, fish tonight. <laughs> hey. Unless you want fish tonight. Uh, and the hot water. And the hot water. Oh, what have I done? And uh, yep. the and installation, installation security. Yeah. Now, look, it's, as far as you, you, you can determine, everything's looking a-okay on that. Now, oh, so the installation security. Oh no, no, that no, it's been fixed. You you have fixed it. Okay, good. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So that's a day's worth of. That's so cat's that's day. day. Yeah. That's cat's days. Everybody else has been working on on health and repairs and things like that, um, which we've already rolled for. Look, um, and everyone has a hot. Everyone has a, a has a, a gets a proper shower, clean. Everything's working fine. Everyone has what they want for dinner, because um, the, the the food defense dispens, dispenses. You know, tea, Earl Grey, hot. Uh, um, everything. Yeah. So, what do you, what do you feel like having for dinner, guys? <laughs> Lobsters over the door with, yeah, with a fried egg on top and spam. <laughs> Some barbecue with sweet potato fries. There you go. Um, actually, it's, actually, it's rather a pleasant evening. The uh, the the sapes are um are doing a okay. Can you give me a can you give me a um, a psych roll for the sapes, please, Babs? I'll poke you in a second, Babu. <laughs> What's that? Can you give me a psychological can you give me a psychoanalyze role for this for the sapes, please? Psychoanalyze. You know the one. But something when you do earlier, yeah. Pathology. That's the one. Well done. Um, so yeah, the sapes are all good, uh, happy, well fed, content. And the group is happy, well fed, and thing. Um, the only the only, for want of a better term, bug in inverted commas in the system is that you're still getting that stupid cartoons uh, on Terminal 6. Yeah. Um, so there's no entertainment apart from backwards running cartoons or whatever it was. Yeah. Cat's just trying to learn ast astrogation as she sleeps. <laughs> How do you know it's accurate? How do you know it hasn't been corrupted? I don't. Uh, that's going to be fun. Um, anyway, about six uh, about six hours after you fix the installation security um, software, um, every alarm in the in the platform goes off. 
shattering you out of sleep if you're asleep, which a lot of you should have been had a, been down for a couple of hours. Most of us, but we're still doing shifts. Mm. So yeah. So every alarm in the place is going off. Is the temperature still good? The temperature's still good. Twenty uh, thirty degrees. Yeah, as much as that is good to sleep in, which it is yeah, not. Not. But yeah. uh, um. All right. Uh. I guess Cat will wake up and go over to the terminal one. Go over to terminal one. Okay. Yes. That, and that's that's where the uh. Mm -hmm. The installation security. Uh, mm -hmm. Should be looking at the installation security program to no. figure out. Is that just a? I'll just display info for now to see what the alarms are. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, the oxygen alarm, the radiation alarm, um, the uh, buoyancy alarm, um, the reactors, uh, the reactor scramble alarm. You name it, it's going off. Ah, uh, which is obviously not true. Um. What does my uh, Atmos calves tell me that the oxygen levels and radiation? 21%, zero oxygen, 30 degrees centigrade. Zero oxygen's bad. No, I said, no, did I say zero radiation? <laughs> 31, 21% 20, <laughs> oxygen. Yeah. Did I say that the wrong way around, did I? Yeah, you did. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Uh, all right. Uh, so I guess I'll have a look at this program to see if it's been busted. Well, if you if you want to if you want to shut the alarms off, um, it's a quick manipulation program. Okay, let's do that so people can sleep. Yep, all the alarms now, all the alarms shut off. So Cat must have done something right. And what are you looking at? The, the alarm, the alarm software, or the installation security software? Oh, yeah, because they're separate, aren't they? Uh, I'll be looking at the alarm software. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, look, the alarm software, um, it's, re it's, being re it's, it's being reported to the alarm software that um, all the sensors are reading correctly, but somewhere in the, in the, in the, in the alarm program, they're getting flipped. Yeah. And so the alarm software then doing its proper job of setting off the alarms. So yes, there's a bug in the alarm software. That's not great. Hmm. All right. Sounds like our science experiment hasn't worked. Uh, Cat will fix this as much as it's going to sleep deprive her. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it doesn't take you too long um, yeah. to fix it. I mean, it only takes about an hour or so to fix it, but you've managed to uh, get rid of the bug in the alarm software. Cool. Um, yes. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? Well... I mean, I'd, I'd like to inspect the life support system to see if uh, the temperature bugs are reappearing. The SIF system or the software? Uh, the software. Software. Uh, yep, yeah, quick, quick manipulate programs. No, everything looks A-OK. Everything looks -OK. Mm. Uh, yeah, so at least I guess that the interesting piece of information there is that it's not like a a slow change or degradation if it looks all okay. Because mm -hmm. what it, okay. It, you said it was like six hours since we last fixed it. Uh, six hours since you last touched the installation security software. Yes. Yeah. And how how long was it last time where we woke up and the temperature was all through bar after I fixed it? Oh, somewhere between 12 and 14 hours. Yeah, okay. Cool. Okay. So what are you doing? Go back to bed? Yeah. All right. Well, nothing else happens during the night. During the night. Yeah. Um, um, and 
everything's still working properly for breakfast. So bacon and eggs and muffins and toast and wherever else, coffee, hot coffee and mm-hmm. you name it. Um, about an hour after you finish breakfast, um, you note the temperature starting to drop. Great. Mm. All right. That's annoying. Uh, so at this point, I kind of turn to the dock and go, obviously it's not hot enough to kill this thing at this, this temperature and it's as high as we can go. Um, mm, as high as the computers will allow you to go. Yeah, I suppose I could hack the Gibson, but probably dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you know that reference, dude, but well done. Uh, I would have thought that would have been before your time. Uh, no, I don't think so. 97? No, oh, no, I suppose not. 97, I was 11. Yeah, fair enough. Um, do, you want, do you want to play a game? <laughs> okay. That was before your time. Yes, well. Yeah, I, I, st- I still watch that. I still watch it. It's a good film. That's how old I am. I went to school with Matthew Broderick. Did you really? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, you remember you told me that earlier. Anyway, so um, while the guys... Wrong cat? <laughs> hmm? You wanted something. You called my name. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I think we're going to have to start scanning these computers for life forms in any way that we can. Uh, because... I, I, I don't think that within normal human temperatures we can kill this thing. Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, a human being can, can survive up to 45 degrees without too much trouble. For yeah. example, I mean, we do it here in Australia quite often, remember? Yeah, but you don't live in 45 degrees. You have limited exposure to 45 degrees. <laughs> There's people who live outside in that type of weather. As long as it's dry. I mean, we used to have Sheriff Joe Arpaio when we our prisons were overcrowded, he put everybody outside in tents in the summer. Nice. What a lovely, what a lovely person. Yep. All right. Well, I mean, we we can search for extraneous data, I suppose. I think the the the, the thought here is that it's an intelligent type of life form. Well, well, it's an intelligence of some sort, um, and it seems to be heat sensitive. From the speculations from our, um, from our uh, computer person that passed away, uh, mm-hmm. and it, and it kind of, I kind of feel like that bumping it up to thirty slowed down the the uh, reoccurrence of these bugs, or I don't um, know whether, whether actually, I'm Actually, give me actually give me a quick logic roll for that one, since you've mentioned that, please. Your mm. hypothesis, your hypothesis, uh, you feel is somewhat correct based on um, the time it took for the life support, um, the main computer's life support software to change back the first time to the time it's changed now assuming it has changed now you actually haven't checked that out but it's a good assumption to make yeah so yes and the fact that the reactor room which was at 10 degrees centigrade seemed to be working a-okay whereas everywhere else was at minus 10 degrees centigrade certainly leads strength to that hypothesis well, so, so maybe it's just a matter of maybe maybe it's just a matter of getting the temperature higher. Well, so we we already know that there's um, an upper range where whatever it is is causing the temperature to go down. Have we determined if there's a lower range yet? No, and I'm not sure how you do that. Oh, cool. yeah, and we can just go all go back to the. Yeah, well, here's the, here's the thing. Outside in Ventru's atmosphere, where 
the hypothesis is this thing came from is at minus 100. And yet the platform's kept at minus 10. So whether you could get the temperature down below minus 100 inside the platform without opening up holes in all the walls. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing. Oh, well, that, that, that isn't rocket science, but um, I, I, it's just a question. So we, we already know that when it's, it's bumping up and comes down. I just wonder if it goes mm. down. Yeah, no, it was, back no up. It, was a, it was a fair question. It's just that will be very dangerous to us because even our heat suits will not last very long. Well, and couldn't we just go back to the ship? The shuttle? Yeah. Well, the shuttle's got the same problems as... as, as uh, uh, oh, and I see what you mean. Well, you may, maybe. I don't see why not. I mean, it's not a permanent before. move. It's, you know, whatever. A couple hours yeah. in the shuttle. Well, it was about 14 hours, give or take, from the time that Cat fixed the main computer's life support program to the time when the temperature started dropping. The second time around. The first time around, it was about 12 to 14. Well, the, the flip side to this plan is there could be a risk that reducing the temperature so much would actually overrun the ship and make it impossible to fix this infestation. Yeah, well, I didn't even <laughs> thought about that. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, listen, the other thing is, and it's something I think you may, you may have um, yeah, the, the, the main support life, the main computer's life support system software allows this, the temperature range to be set from zero degrees centigrade to 30 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. The platform's at minus 20, at yeah, minus 10. That's outside the range. Yeah. So I point that out to you. Oh yeah, yeah. I think yeah. That's right. I'm just yeah. Yeah. And that's so, because, I mean, that's because we, it was set to. Could uh, we boost the temperature even higher and then um, set one area lower and then hope? No, no, you haven't got that much control. It's no, a, it's, it's an all, all it's an all of platform and or none of platform thing. You can't set individual rooms for different temperatures. Yeah. Oh, don't we have the vacuum of space? Oh well, yeah. Okay. Well, it's not vacuum space because you're in the atmosphere of the planet. It's the planet's atmosphere happens to be toxic to humans, and cold. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we could raise we could raise it, right? We could yeah, definitely. raise the altitude. Raise the the altitude of the platform, or raise the. Temperature. I think he means temperature. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the plan. Like, ra see, we we'll raise the temperature to forty uh, through manipulating the program in the same in the opposite way that the uh, the matrix is. Um, yep and see how that goes see if we can extend our time frame to a longer hey period guys, mm. can i interrupt real quick mm. of course what temperature can. is our shuttle at uh same temperature as the um same temperature as the platform at the moment so yeah actually actually no i lie i lie your the platforms to open to the atmosphere the, the shuttles open to uh the ventry atmosphere because of the um oh no no it's not hang on just, hang on hang on hang on hang on hang on, hang on. Where are we? I think we would have. No, it's it's it, 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 it's at the same it's at the same temperature as A one, which is the same temperature as the rest of the platform. So I would think we need to heat up the shuttle. We need to warm that up as soon as we can. Oh, well, certainly can. You can certainly go in and set the shuttle controls to um to uh, to be that warm if you wanted. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as we, I think, had identified that the um, that the heat slowed it down, we would heat up the shuttle because we need to keep the shuttle from getting infected. 
Okay. So are you going to go do that? Yeah. Okay. So uh, you turn the shuttle temperature controls up to what temperature? I think you guys were saying 45, right? Oh, I said 45 as an example of people living in high temperatures. Yes. Um, you've had the you, you've had the, pl the you've, you've had the platform up to up to 30, and the shuttle won't go. The sh shuttle controls won't won't allow the shuttle controls won't allow to go any higher than that. That's a pretty then, standard top then limit. 30? You can set it to 30 if you want. Yeah. Okay, we'll set it to 30. Okay. All right. Now, about trying to figure out like whether or not we can measure. I mean, is this a digital anomaly? I guess we we could start by looking for something as a known alien parasite or or chemical well, chemical reaction, etc. You could. The supposition, though, is that it's not chemical so much as some sort of electrical signal. Yeah, but Kat asked me to do something along the lines of, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a chem guy, so. Yeah, yeah, no, I know that. That's not my bailiwick. No, I know that. But thank you for pointing it out. Oh, so we don't actually have a biologist. Rip. <laughs> nope. Nope, closest we've got to the doc. Yeah, a medical... theoretically, to have graduated from medical school, I should have biology, but I don't. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> which is why, which is why I'm letting you use your medical skills with some penalties. For that reason, but the actual there, there is actually a proper biology biology skill which somebody um, may have had early on, but doesn't. Yeah, whatever. I've got chem, but not bio. Oh, well, whichever one it happens to be, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I guess our next thing is trying to, to uh, manipulate this program so we can get the temperature up to 40 degrees. Okay. Um, well, if it's certainly... 40, then the shuttle would be 30, then the shuttle would be nice and... Shiny silver coin. <laughs> we can, well, if we can adjust the shuttle, we'll have to reprogram it or whatever. Well, that's two, that's two separate programming roles, obviously. Right. So, Kat, do you want to do that? Uh, yep, sure. All right, which one do you want to do first, the, the life support computer or the shuttle? I'll do the life support computer. Okay. Also, can we get a rough estimate of what the temperature difference is between lowering the altitude versus raising it? The altitude of the platform? Yep. Uh, well, it's minus 100 degrees outside now, so um, it'll get a little bit warmer going lower and a bit cooler going up. But I mean, that's too... 20%? Oh, it's hard to say. That's what I was asking. Yeah, well, it's hard to say. You'd have to do some there's, analysis on there's that. There's nothing in the, the... No, there's nothing in the computers. There's nothing in the information that you've got available that tells you one way or the other. What we did notice uh, is that the observation gallery was not, like, ridiculously colder. And what was that, like, how many minus meters? Se minus 70? Yeah. For a pretty much... 100 meters? 100 meters, yeah. But the observation platform would be getting some heat from the from the the platform overall. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, okay. So you managed to reprogram the uh, main life support program, main life life support system, to allow you to set the temperature to forty degrees Excellent. centigrade. Excellent. Is that what? Are you setting it for forty degrees? Yes. Yes. Okay. Fine. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, what about the shuttle? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll do the same over there mm -hmm. since we're worried about it. Uh.
Uh, yeah, um, um, there is some uh, some strange code in the um, in the shuttle computer, by the way. Nice, as expected there. So yes, um, so the temperature rises over the course of a couple of hours to forty degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. um, as the temperature starts getting around the 35 degree centigrade, uh, the lights start to flicker. Um, the backwards running, the backwards, backwards running cartoon suddenly cease and the terminal goes blank. Um, um, the odd alarm uh, has, uh, uh, goes off for a second or two and then stops. All sorts of anomal anomalous situations happen. Some doors lock, some don't. Um, yeah. Perhaps we should manually tweak it back down and see if things go back to normal rather than allow it or whatever is happening to happen on its own. No, hopefully we're killing the bug. I mean, I can go check out the programs to see whether... Well, yeah, okay, which ones do you want to check out if that's if that's what you're going to do? Uh, well, what did we just have? We had the communication system. Do I'm going to go put on my spacesuit. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you paranoid individual. Sorry, you, you, the communication software, did you say? Yeah, well, you just said the cartoons vanished. I, yep. unfor unfortunately, I didn't look at that program before, so I don't know. Uh, but it, let's just look at because I'm going to go to Terminal One anyway. Uh, yeah, th that's got the JGL on it, right? That's got you can get to the JGL from Terminal One, yes. Yeah. So I'll do that and just see whether I'll just have a look at the uh, communications program on the sure. JGL. Give me a roll. And if I see nothing weird, then that's a cool sign. Uh, you see nothing weird. I like it. Do you want to check the information storage while you're there? Absolutely. Oof. Uh, there's nothing there either. Nothing there or nothing weird? Nothing weird. Okay. Sorry, that was, sorry. My, that was very yeah, different bad, things. <laughs> yeah, bad, bad email spoke, bad email spoke on that one. Sorry about that. No, there's, no, there's nothing anomalous there. You can access all the all the information on uh, you know, whatever you want, whatever it contains, which is quite a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where is it? I had it a minute ago. Um, yeah, you, you've got a full access. You, 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 the record systems, the library. Um, you, you, you can pull up the file index. Um, and, and you name I, it, it's all there. I remember, before, I remember last time we looked at this uh, information thing, the index was broken. Yeah, it's back. And it's totally back. Okay, cool. I like it. Uh, cool, cool. And, it feels you, and like, you're sweating like a pig. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm hoping that we can bump it down to 35 degrees and not suffer at 40 degrees. Uh, uh, you can. Are you, uh, are you going to do that? And if so, how long after it, it hits forty, or even before it hits forty? Uh, well, I mean, oh, okay, yeah, good point. Um, I will. I will put this question to the. Uh, actually, let me go through the other programs first, and just make sure the weirdness is gone before. <laughs> I... Okay. So, which one you're looking? So, you're on Terminal One, which gives you access to the oh. JGL and the JMN. So, I'll, I'll log out of the JGL and go into the JMN. Yeah. And look at the. Let's look at the life support first. Uh huh. Uh, all I, all the different parts of the life support. So, what's that? Like four roles. Uh no, well, one will do it for the general. For, okay. for the general, um, looking at things. Yeah. Yeah. Look. Um. It again appears perfectly normal. And nice. it appears to be working perfectly normally. Okay. Um, although, having said that, although oh. you are getting signals from the bureaucracy program to turn the temperature down. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, uh, the the second one would be the installation security because that's the one. Again, we'll... it looks perfectly fine now. Nice. Temperatures. The temperatures hit forty degrees by now. By the way. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 
it's going to be uncomfortable, but I would like to check all these things first. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the alarm system was the other one mm -hmm. that was malfunctioning. Again, it looks perfectly. It looks perfectly fine. I mean, it's it, the the uh, temperature the temperature alarm hasn't been triggered, but it's getting into the warning zone. Gotcha. All right. Uh, and just because we haven't done it yet, uh, I just have a peek at the bureaucracy program. Again, it looks. You got a plus ten, haven't you? It looks yeah. okay. Um, it's sending signals out. Uh, to the uh, the JCR analysis and drive programs. It's sending signals out to the damage control maintenance and robot maintenance. It's telling the robot maintenance program to fix the dam, um, uh, the maintenance and management to fix the dam hole in the side of um, yeah. F module um, and not getting and acknowledging not getting any, any reply back from any robot at all. Yep. Um, and it's also telling the it's telling the life it's suggesting the life support to turn the life support system back down to a, a reasonable temperature at 20 degrees. Yeah. Um, it's receiving a 40 degree temperature warning from the life support program. Yep. Oh, not warning, but signal. Yeah. Um, and it's everything else seems to be a okay as well at this stage. Um, it's also getting a 20. It's also getting a um, a 40 degree temperature reading from the second life support software on the life support computer. Got it. I... Um, so, but it looks okay. Um, cool. it's, yeah. Um, although it is, it is concerned about it, the program's concerned, you know, about, uh, F module. Yes. And also, and, and, um, also it's reporting, um, from the maintenance software. It's also reporting it, uh, coordinating back down that there's some damage to corridor A2 that's been jury rigged repaired. And yeah. it's try, trying to send a, a maintenance robot out to fix that too. It is via from, the robot maintenance software. From the installation, from the the information that I can see, is it worried about like the F one area totally failing, or is it uh, just... F two? Yeah, it's well, it, it, it's it's it, it's the Bioxy program is sending out signals to get to get F two repaired because the temperature is um, in that area is so low. Yeah. Um, and correspondingly, F1, because it's right next door and there's only a regular door between the two. Yeah. Um, it's um, sending information out to the make by the robot maintenance, the robot management and maintenance software to fix the turrets. Yep. Um, of course, there's no robots available. Yeah. Because uh, they're all turned off. Um, so, yeah. Um, it's, also tr it's also sending signals out to get the radio mask prepared. Yep. Again, there's nothing to to acknowledge that. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah. Uh, so at this point, I think I would like to operate computer and set it down to thirty five. Okay. And over the course of you know some some several tens of minutes, it dropped the temperature. Your Atmos CAS is reporting a thirty five degree centigrade temperature. In the enclosed areas where it's open, yeah. like F, yeah, F, and that it's not. Um, there's A two, A two is not reaching, um, th uh, reaching over thirty two um, degrees at the moment. It's being it, that's what it's, the software's telling you anyway. Gotcha. Um, but that's not unusual because it's a jury rig. Yeah. Uh, thing. Um, so yeah. But look, all in all, from what you can tell from the logs and the readouts and everything else, is that um, every piece of software is working, apart from the main life support software on the main computer, everything is working within normal, within normal tolerances, doing what it should be doing, based on the information it's receiving, which, it, which and the information it's receiving is consistent with your knowledge of the situation. Yeah. Obviously, life support, uh, the life support software uh, on uh, on JMN, um, it's reporting what it should be reporting, but the bureaucracy program doesn't like it. <sighs> yeah, because because you rewrote the life support system. Yes, yes. Um, so yes, but everything else seems to be fine. Well, well relatively speaking. Cool. Um. There's even there's even temperature in the observation dome has been has risen back up to thirty five degrees. Oh really? Yeah. 
Huh. Um, and it's reporting, it's report, and the, the systems are reporting um, radiation in E5 and E7. Yep, which is not. But you'd expect that. Yeah. Cool. And I feel like that's, yeah, that's not the end of it, but uh, it's a nice place to be. <laughs> <laughs> You're so paranoid. It's terrible. <laughs> okay. Um, as I said, you did find you did find some traces of odd code in the um, shuttle computer. Yeah, I. Yeah. Um, what do you want? To, do you want to do anything about that? I, I I figured once I was pretty happy with the the platforms computers, I would go having a look at the the shuttle and seeing what the temperature is there and all that kind of jazz. Sure. You can do that. Um, the temperature in the shuttle is 30 degrees uh, as yeah. per what it was set for. Yeah. Um, and there are still some traces of odd code yeah. in the shuttle. Yeah. Uh, they're not full on bugs, but they're not, they, they're not there. Having said that, don't forget though, that you guys had a, um, went through that magnetic storm on the way down. It scrambled a lot of the information. Yeah. So yeah. it could be it, it could be left over. It, that could be part of it. Yeah. But or the, it could, yeah. or it could be something else. Yeah. But given that you're, you're given that like when when we were dealing with matrix issues, they were obvious bugs. Well, they weren't obvious bugs, but they were clearly someone had messed with this to make it perform a different function. Whereas I'm not you, seeing that as much here. You're it's not seeing it corruption. as much. It's corruption, yeah. Yeah. But having said that, there were, you did note similar type corruption in some of the other systems on board the platform too. Yeah. So. I think yeah. I would like to spend time to fix them over over the remaining days that we have. In the shuttle? Yeah. Yeah, go for your life. Give me a give me a, um, a, a, a manipulate programs role, and we'll use the one role for the entire. Yeah, okay. So eventually, you think you fixed the shuttle computer. Okay. Um, again, um, do you want to keep it at thirty degrees, or do you want to override it? I'll the, I'll put that question out to the. Will, will there be any uh, problems from a fuel perspective? Well, not why you hooked up to the shut. Not why you hooked up to the electrical system of the, of the platform, which is what the guys repaired early on in the system in the yeah. process. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the way back, uh, well, I mean, it's it's a bit of extra. I mean, en the energy's got to come from somewhere. Um, so, um, it'd have a small effect, but it'd, it'd it'd be a negligible effect unless you want to go jaunting off around the solar system. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I I mean on my vote would be yeah, may as well manipulate it in the same way. Uh it would be an incredibly amusing thing for me to roll a crit fail on, but uh... <laughs> Yeah, it would. What's everybody else? did you say you wanted to put that out for a vote, did you? Yeah, why not? Do it, crank it up. Yeah, go for it. Uh, no, well that'll be another Just remember you have only yourself to blame if you mess up. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So what are you raising the shuttle temperature to now that you've overridden it? Let's go 35. Okay. So the whole platform is at 35. Now, my next question is, while you got, I mean, it's very, it's, it's rather taxing working in those temperatures. Yeah. Uh, especially doing the, the, some of the heavy stuff that the repair crews are, do, repair crews are doing in, in the rings, things like that. Um, how long are you going to keep it at 35? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I mean, there's, there's there's no reason apart from psychological and fatigue to not keep it at thirty five. Yeah, I mean, can we deal with this just by working less and slower? Yeah, by and taking way. taking good breaks and stuff. You certainly can. Um, I, I I think I would be uneasy because we're still in the atmosphere. I think I would be uneasy dropping the temperature uh, unless it was causing a serious effects. And at that point, the doc would say no more. It's the law. And we, we drop the temperature down. Yeah, to, that, the doc or Babu, whoever, which, yeah. depending whether it's physical or mental. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. I think All we right. should turn on the general maintenance and the reactor maintenance bots then. Make sure that they're free of bugs and then turn them on. See if the general maintenance will take care of any of the repairs for us. Yeah, it's a good Pick plan. up the slack since we're going to take more breaks. Well, that would involve the robot pick experts doing some analysis work on the robots. To, to check them out, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Is that what you want to do? Is that what's happening, Cerise? You're our main robotics expert, aren't you? you because if we have to, to work even slower... Robots, huh? Well, I think that what they want, I think what they want, I think the idea was to check them out to see whether their bug, their software, whether the software is bug free and then turn them on if it is. Right, game one... Well, game mechanics wise, that would be checking out the mission and the functions on each of the robots you were thinking about turning back on. List which would functions. Be yeah, list functions and, uh, um, and uh, lists, uh, where were, hang on. Sorry, there's only said... one list. There's two altars. No, it'd be an altar. It'd be an altar because it, 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 it's a little bit more detailed than just listing. It, it's actually looking at the code, which is what the altar altar stuff is about. Um, not that you're altering. Normally, you're just checking, using that. We're using it as so a role. Altar function. Yeah, tw two roles per robot. Which robot do you guys want first? Probably the reactor maintenance one. Actually, it's an alter function and an alter mission. It's one of each. Okay, in that was the that was the reactor, reactor. robot. Okay, um, yeah, it's complete. As far as you can see, it's completely clean of any anom anomalous code. So it should be safe to turn on. No, is does it have a? Is it controlled by the computer? The yes, it, it does. Clean, it, right. It, well, the, as far as, well, it's a good question. Um, Cat hasn't checked out the maintenance computer yet. And and these guys have a. I assume they have a uh, link, a computer link, right? Yeah, it's a wireless link. Yeah. Yeah. So, Kat, you would need to do the maintenance computer first, Cat. Yeah. Let me do that. So what are you doing? The maintenance software, the robot management software, the damage control software, or the computer security software, or all four? Uh, probably all four, at least the maintenance and the ro robot man management one, but damage control probably too. Yeah, I, I think I think we probably have to. Mm -hmm. I think you need to do all four. Yeah, let's go robot management first. Okay. Uh, it looks clean. All right. Go uh, the maintenance. Oh, uh, you get plus two. You got plus ten. I keep forgetting. Yeah. That. Uh, the maintenance software again looks clean. Uh, and the it's... damage control. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, the damage control, the maintenance, and the robot management are all talking to the are all talking and taking instructions from the bureaucracy program. Yeah. And sending out appropriate commands to um each other and obviously to the robots which are getting no replies back because there's no robots turned on yeah and i d i turned on the uh i i've already inspected the bureaucracy program so we know the the yeah. top level is good yeah um and it's also uh, by the way the drive program is um um is reporting the drive and analysis programs are pointing uh, on the chemical refining computer reporting back to the bureaucracy computer about yeah. the maintenance of the of the reactors. So, um, yeah. uh, good to know. All right, um, I guess I'll get my butt down to uh, put my uh, radiation suit on and get my butt down to Terminal Seven. Then, uh, um, well, you don't. You, get, you can get to the chemical refining from Terminal Two. Terminal Two. Oh, yeah. I always forget about Terminal Two. But you've got to go through. You've got to go through the computer security software on Terminal Two, uh, if you're using Terminal Two. The other thing is you haven't checked out the computer security on um, on the JMT yet either. Or did you? Uh, now you gave me three rolls. You I didn't just one, then. Then. So yeah, let me do that. Yeah. Thanks for the poke. It's all right, and it's clean as well. Okay. So it looks like the JMT's clean, and the JMN's clean, and the JGL's clean. Yeah. You haven't checked out the other two yet. Yeah, let's go over to. Uh, we'll go terminal two. Terminal two. 
We've done the GL completely. Yeah, the GL's clean. And we've done the MN completely. Uh, now you haven't. Oh? Haven't done the computer lockout and you haven't done the computer security. Ah, yeah, okay, gotcha. But you have done the JMT. Yeah. All right, so I'll go to two and fully check the um, the uh, chemical refining one. All right, well, there's four software on that, computer security, analysis, drive, and processing. This is the first time you've used Terminal 2 to get in through the computer security. Do you have a password for the, for the JCR? I do. Are you using it? Yes. It gets you in. Good. Uh, cool, cool, cool. So four rolls. Uh, just whatever, whatever order you list them out in, we'll do that. Yeah, computer security analysis, driving pricing. That's what I've got on my listing. Uh, computer security is clean. Um, uh, analysis is clean. Uh, drive is clean which you're pretty sure anyway, because you haven't been changing yeah. altitude that much. And the chemical refining processing process is uh, clean and has been for a while, it looks like, because you've been, don't forget, you've been producing chemicals yeah. steadily over the last couple of days as well. And now if I display info on the the uh, refining program, Yep. Uh, can I, I see yep. how desperate the reactor maintenance is? Uh, well, the processing software says, it's all about the processing. I think you want the analysis software is what you uh, want. Ah, the analysis, yeah. So you want to give me an, put on the analysis role then? Yeah. Oh, is there an, is there an analysis role? Well, there's, sorry, a display info on the analysis software. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, okay, I'll do another one. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Um, look, the analysis, it's general, it's nothing critical, um, but it's just general maintenance that the, that they make the, the um, reactor maintenance robot will be able to handle once it's brought back online. If you were going to leave it for more than, say, 10 to 15 days, it would start to become a major hassle. Okay. Yep. So we need to turn the robot back on or get or do the maintenance there. Or do the maintenance yeah. yourselves. Yeah. But knowing our track record with that, it might be better to leave it to the robot. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just because I was never high enough of an engineer. Yeah. So the reactor robot, I'll turn it back on. Uh, hang on, have you done? Sorry, before you do, I'll I'll, I'll pause. Yeah, okay. have you done both? You did the you did the uh, where I are did you? both rolls. Oh, you did. Okay. Um, yeah, it was completely clean. That was right. Yeah. Okay. So you turn it back on, and um, it starts to move around the room, doing it, doing some general maintenance on the reactors, on all seven reactors. Excellent. Uh, uh, and I guess I should complete my uh, checking, uh, which is the computer lockout and the other computer, one, the computer, computer security. security. Yeah, on and the you haven't, MA. yeah, and you haven't looked at the JLS at all yet. Ah, uh, yeah, because the secondary one that I keep forgetting about. Yeah, but let's mm -hmm. do the the lockout and then the computer security on MN. Mm-hmm. Um, looks clean, looks clean. All right, now I'll go to the JLS. Mm -hmm. Terminal 4 or Terminal 6, your choice. Yeah, Terminal 4 is fine. Less walking. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, so what programs were on there? It was obviously uh, life a level support. Two, a level yeah. 2 computer security and a level 1 life support. That's it. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, I'll check both of those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. I didn't. Uh, I'm get... uh, The life support, the, the backup life support software on the yeah. on the life support computer. Yeah. It's got some funny stuff in it. Ah, yeah, cool. I'll have to look into that. In uh, detail. Yes, yes. Uh, my critical fail costing me a day of debugging on Basically, a bug that yes. doesn't exist. <laughs> there you go. If that's another critical fail, I'll cry. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's just, it's just, it's just an odd. It, whoever the coder was of that that piece of life support software used used a very funny uh, programming style. Yeah. Cool. 
use globals instead of local variables all over the place. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, why would they do something like that? Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, so look, all the system, all the computer systems seem to be clear. The maintenance robot seems to, sorry, the nuclear maintenance robot, the robot seems to be clear. You were talking about turning on a second robot at one stage. I don't, I can't remember which one it was. The general maintenance. The general maintenance robot, that's what it was. Are you going to check that one out, Cerise? Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Um, look, there's... There, it's clean, but there's evidence that it, there's evidence that it was once um, had buggy software in it. Okay, you guys. But it's cl it's clean. Turn it back on. Yeah, comfortable. Yeah, it's like it's like re re remnant bits of code that won't get called that it were left behind. Um, and the general maintenance robot gets switched back on and it starts going about doing general maintenance stuff. They're the only two robots that are actually still left alive, aren't they? And the one you brought with you. Yeah. And no, yeah, there's three robots. The caretaker, well, the custodian one, the general maintenance and the reactor maintenance. What was the general one? The one you brought with you? No, you, there's five robots here. Oh, we brought a SITS robot. That's right. Yeah. Because the safe warden is dead. Maintenance. The domestic duties is turned off. External maintenance is gone. General maintenance is deactivated. Reactor maintenance is activated. Yeah. All right. So do you want to, do you want to turn on the question? Do you want to turn on the household duties? Or do you want to check it out and then turn it on? I don't Let's care about the household out. duties one. Wait, which type did we bring with us? Uh, the it's, in the, it's in the... It's in the... Um, um, where is it? The shuttle info dump. dump. It's, yeah, a CL, it's, it's, a CL, it's a CRLE1. It's a yeah, level which is a maintenance. modified maintenance computer. Yeah, yeah, soft, uh, yeah, a modified maintenance robot. So yeah, I'll check it out. All right. And if it checks out clean, we'll turn it on. And connect it up to the platform computer? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it looks fine too, although again, there are traces of uh, something left behind. Do we want to deal with the safe warden? That one's dead. We, okay. We blasted that one to bits. One of them got murdered by Jazz, yeah. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yep. So you've got you've got the reactor maintenance robot, the general maintenance robot, and your general and Charlie, the one you brought with you, all yeah. active and hooked up and doing their job doing their jobs um, as per the instructions being received from the maintenance computer and the bureaucracy program as such. The only other robot that you have that is deactivated and still available is the general general duties one. Do you need that one for anything? Oh, the domestic duties, Millie. Oh, well, you know, keeping things tidy, clean, you know. She's basically a maid. Well, yeah, I think we're okay with that. On or off? Off. Fair enough. I'm just asking the question. That's uh, just more time we're not spending fixing things. Yeah. All right. Let me just answer now. You guys talk amongst yourself. Talk amongst yourself about anything else you want to do while I look something up. Um... Did we get to the point where the fuel line is repaired? Uh, well, you will sooner or later. Why? Okay, cool. I just didn't know whether that was still on our list or not. Oh, it's something that the guys need to do. They haven't made any rolls for it yet. Okay. If that's what you're asking me. Well, we There's made another, all 10, 20 rolls, but... Yeah, that, was for the that wasn't for the pipeline. That was for the electrical and the structural. 
if you want the pipeline stuff, there's another ten roles. There's another twelve roles to be made for the pipeline stuff. But I was waiting. On, I've been waiting through the time while we were doing things because you've been working on this that maintenance stuff oh, anyway. Okay. But if you want to make those roles now, because you're at you, we're at about you're at about that point. If you wanted to, you know. Yeah. Sure. I'll do six. Series. You do the other. Yep. Those are the technician repairs. Yep. Those will all work for me. There's something very weird about the dice movement in FGU. Yeah, I'm noticing that. It's it's bouncing funnily. <laughs> so if what happens is it rolls within your chat box. But if your screen resolution is not the same as the other person, the other person sees the dice where they go relative to your chat yeah. box. Yeah. Oh, and I'm on like a 3440 by 1440 yep. ultra yep. wide. Yep. So it looks very strange to me. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, because since, since it's a physics engine, they all have to take the same path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if mine moves 50 pixels and then bounces, yours has to do the same, even if that's inside or outside the chat box. Yeah. All right. Um, so you, you spend the next several weeks uh, finalizing the repairs, keeping things going. Um, by the time day... Uh, the time the 38 days is up, you filled all 20 of those canisters um, that are available with biochem stuff. Yeah. Uh, and you've uh, managed to hook up a new power supply to the freeze field of, um, of um, the guy who's still alive. Cool. Uh, let's, yeah. So you've got no radio communications with the with the money spider, but it should be back in close enough in range that you can leave the platform, load the shuttle up, leave the platform, um, and you know, hoik it home. Um, those failed roll the tech repair rolls that you made, you want to remake those? At minus, I'll put a penalty on them because. Yeah, same better. person or since same same we... person. Well, I don't know, it, but yeah, you know, it, probably the same person. Be the best. Um, so it, look, it, you get everything repaired properly, um, and the shuttle refueled, and everything else like that. What are you putting aboard the shuttle for the trip home? All the canisters, the dude in the <laughs> freeze field, and we'll take back Charlie, I guess. Uh, are the saves coming? They weren't supposed to. They weren't supposed to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Savage. And if I there's guess. any industrial or trade secrets for our other job that we've been assigned for, we'll take those too. Well, I'm assuming I'm assuming uh, Kat's been mining the um, the information systems about that. The the I get the entirety of the information storage would be on my data my file comp I think. <laughs> 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 Funny that. Um, so yeah, all right. Um, so um, you leave. Uh, you, you you enter the shuttle, detach from the uh, Jetson platform, and hit the return button. Um, when you fire the the again, it's a it's a several hour trip. Um, but when you finally break atmosphere, um, yes, Snowball is where you expect to see it, and yes, it looks like the money spider is still attached. Um, the freighter that brought you here originally um, sorry it's gone it's no longer no longer there but that you, you'd expect that yeah um so yeah um you're welcomed back the shuttle docks um, you're welcomed back aboard by the captain, whose name escapes me all of a sudden. Um, did, 
I guess because we had two missions this scenario. Axis, yeah, yeah. Uh, did I get enough on that information uh, storage program to be able to fulfill our secondary objective, which is to spy on them? Yes, that's Excellent. what we're talking about. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, I just, I just wanted to make sure that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we yeah, didn't yeah, need yeah. to do more spying before yeah, we left. Yeah. So. Um, Again, um, you're invited to dinner with the captain and basically gets a debrief. Um, the ship medic takes control of um, the guy in the freeze field and um, puts him in the sick bay and the rest of it. Um, they're disappointed that three of their three of their fellows didn't come back. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry what about that? So what happened down there? Says uh, the captain to you. I guess I'm probably in the best uh, position to explain that. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened. You sh you should send some um, serious biologists down there. But something when the temperature was below 35 degrees on that platform was taking over your electronics. Don't know what it was. But I, all we knew is that when the temperature got at 35 degrees or higher, it killed it. Uh, so be careful of that in the future. Wow. Okay. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, what, you... the pla what, what state's the platform in? Uh, the sapes are there and alive. Uh, the, it, and it's currently uh, at 35 degrees. So you should, it shouldn't be overrun again, theoretically. Folk will chime in and say the reactors are fine. Uh, radio communication tower, the radio communication tower is gone. Uh, both the pads work fine. Uh, your turrets are both gone. Your defensive turrets did not play nice with us. Oh, maybe reactor robots are refining. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, don't worry, you'll get paid. <laughs> the reactor and maintenance, interior maintenance robots are uh, uh, operation operating normally. The extern, exterior maintenance robot uh, appears lost. Mm-hmm. And oh. the state warden has and a big hole in it. Yeah. <laughs> The SAPE handler bot tried to, uh, thought we were SAPEs due to the bugs and tried hugging us to death. So it no longer exists either. Right. It's no longer functional. Um, what about your robots, your sparring robots and other robots here on the on the money spider? Have you uh, everything, anomalies? No, no, everything's been fine. Well, if you have any anomalies, raise the temperature. Uh huh. So yeah. What else? Um, so listen, um, that's actually a good place to leave it. We've been going for three or four hours. Sorry. Let me just check that out, whatever that was. Oh, no, that's just me shit posting. Oh, right. <laughs> now I'm going to have to look at it, whatever it is. Um, so listen, that's a good place to leave it. Anyone got any objections to that? No. Nope, sounds good. Nope, it's dinner time. In that, in that, yeah, well, that's, that's something. It's dinner time. Um, right before you, right before you uh, talking about dinner time, um, right before you uh, you go, um, check that out. But in the meantime, guys, uh, thanks for playing. Thanks for watching, everybody. You can run those credits. Thanks, Brian. We'll see everybody in two weeks' time, yeah? Yep. Well, that's it for this session. We hope you've enjoyed the game as much as we did. We'd like to thank Smiteworks, Sirenscape, and Twitch, and, of course, all the fantastic people involved with the Star Frontiers RPG over the years. I'm Dulux Oz. 
on behalf of the entire gaming group, we'd like to say thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Until then, may your God go with you.